So given that this is going to go up as part two on our YouTube, I don't even know if we should give a preamble. Because um, anyway, if you watch that, you if you watch that other part with all of our, you know, how, I don't know if you, I, I looked back at the video and our, we have like a one hour debrief about everything, <laughs> everything but Nevsky. Everything, everything but Nevsky. Everything yeah, but we, Nevsky. Yeah, we had a little runoff from that. Um. And the funny thing was that somewhere around the halfway mark of this three and a half hour video, you say, oh, we, we only have a half an hour left. <laughs> and then we go on for another two. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty funny. Um, okay, so anyway, where we left off is actually, it's, an, it's interesting, right? Because we are tied at one to one. Um, right. And the reason for that is that you start with a victory point, which is down yes. here on the right. And uh, I conquered Izborsk. And the mistake I made there, just, just to um, remind you and everyone else, is that right. I, I should have ravaged it first. <laughs> Because I ravage your own territories. The reason I didn't ravage it is because I wanted to still be able to to forage there. But that makes no sense because I can just supply, right? Because I'm like, you know, Herman can supply from Dorpat and Odenpa, um, right? And and get two Provender, in fact, right? So it made no sense to do that, right? It's just a bad move. But anyway, so now I conquered it, so I can't ravage it anymore because it's friendly. So technically, I should be at uh, one and a half, but whatever. I said, I think I said in the video, if I could, if I lose by half a point, I'm gonna be like, oh no. <laughs> so yeah. we're tied at one. We went through the first round, and now what happened while you weren't watching um, is that both uh, you and I did, made our battle plans. So I think at the end of the video, we still did the levy phase, right? That yeah. we still did on video. So everyone, so in the, so we're in round two, still in the summer. Still six command cards. We're in the campaign phase of round two, which incidentally is the last part of the two, of the quick start scenario. Yes. The situation is as follows. I have four lords. One of them is in Reval up here, which uh, is, is modern day Talon, because I, I started looking all kinds of stuff up. <laughs> so this is modern day Talon in Estonia. Um, still called Reval by some Germans. It, I guess it has two names. It's in, interesting that way um neva which is here just a trade route is saint petersburg now <laughs> right that's where saint petersburg was founded hmm. um and uh in any case so i have this the danish dudes up here and they're hanging out because in the first round their command card didn't do anything like the seated command card order was knut and or inactive um so I have my three other lords down here, Herman, uh, Rudolf, and Yaroslav. And they're all hanging out in Izborsk, which is, has been conquered. Um, on the other hand, we have, uh, we have Ozzy here playing the Russians. And he's hanging out up here with, uh, Yar with Vladislav. And Vladislav is like hanging out up here because Vladislav is worried that Knud and Abel are going to use their ships to invade Luga or Neva. Right, that's basically what's going to happen. And those are trade routes that, as you can see from the fact that they have a little red outline, similar to Izborsk or Porkov or these places, they just, and they have no garrison and no stronghold. So when I land there, it's just a victory point, as long as I, as long as you don't take it back. Um, and so you're hanging out up there with those guys. And then you have two people in Peskov. And those are uh, those are your other guys, and it's in your case Gavrilo, who's your strongest, and and Domash, who's also not weak, right? Um, <clears throat> and those two are in the field; they're not yet in the stronghold, right? Because they had no reason. The only reason you'd go into a stronghold is because someone's uh, someone's storming or like invading that space. Um, and that's where we are right now. And and I start. Teutons always go first. And I'm starting mm -hmm. with Herman. And Herman is right here in Izborsk. And Herman is a marshal. And because Herman's a marshal, Herman could just click on all three of these lords and all move into Pskov. In which case, you would have to decide whether you are going to battle or whether you're going to withdraw. Now, the stronghold of Pskov has a siege capacity of three, which means you can, you can withdraw with up to three lords. Okay. Um, I'm not sure whether you can do that per lord. Probably you can, is my guess, right? You, per lord, you can probably decide whether you want to retreat or whether you want to withdraw, um, okay. I think. 
I don't know that withdrawal incurs move thought. I'm not sure. But also it wouldn't matter because you have infinite provender. <laughs> you have yeah, Gavrilo, yeah we, we stopped up. Yeah. Um. Gavrilo spent it most of the first round like just a farming. <laughs> just like I'm yeah gonna just chill. i'm gonna farm and get some food and make, we're just gonna hang out learn how to cook yeah. like you're doing you got seven provender by the way there's an upper limit i i in what oh you watch, found an upper limit there okay. isn't an eight eight is the upper any any good oh, wow. coin cart boat provender doesn't matter at, you cap it eight okay um, so you can't have more than eight at any given time and i think we hit eight last <laughs> round too so that that's fortunate that i didn't try to go a little bit further than that right. so but so you saw seven. yeah, I, yeah still, got seven. Still, still doing okay yes. and i think what you described before is that we're, we're sort of everything's sort of hinging on prishkov right Pretty like much. we have we have a little bit of cat and mouse going up north uh depending on what we want to do between um canoe novel and um uh, vladislav right but but basically so much of the attention and energy right now is around what we want to do with um Pushkov, right um because that's like basically 75 percent of of the lords i mean it, it made for, it made for a good title card for the first youtube video <laughs> that we were all <laughs> lumped right here right yes um, because here let me show you something real quick go home recently finished here check this out so i this is the one i lost five and a half to four and a half right again, again like I, I lost as the russians look at this so this is the final state of that game right so oh, just wow. to, just to show you how different the yeah. board state can be right like so i went to luga to defend luga and he just went over to neva and then got two, one one and a half victory points over here just by like moving knut and obel around right right ravaged up here Got another half a victory point, ravaged here, conquered here, and conquered all the way down here. Uh, Velki Yaluki, right? Conquered that too. Right. I all the while went over here hoping that my ravage markers over here would help me, but that wasn't enough, right? Even though I bumped one of his lords, I bumped two of his lords off. Two, not one, two. He misclicked once, right? So he went into a battle where he was going to lose a second lord, um, and he still won the game. So that's would it be, yeah. Would it be fair to say that that game was a little more indirect? Like you had a couple of battles, but it it doesn't look like there's as much of a protracted. I like, think we had work. two battles. I think we had two battles overall, um, right? And that was it. And everything else was like more like uh, chess. And he the, yeah. re the reason he won is because he outsmarted me on the command phase. I wasn't expecting him to put as much into the north, uh, and. and he put like one move into that dude in the south, and it was enough for him to get to Velki Luki and actually two. He did two moves because he knew he knew he was going to go to Velki Luki and then storm it. Um, and so he was very efficient with his command cards, super efficient. Right. And I was like, whoa, okay. And I and he just spread he spread himself out in a way that I just couldn't focus on everything. And in the end, I focused on nothing, right? So. Yeah. So yeah, I lost I was fair and about, Yeah, one thing I was curious about in the planning phase is that like when we were putting together the plan, there was a pass option, right? And yeah. and I'm curious if that's something if if you've encountered that in any of the other games that you've seen, nope. like if you've seen the dynamic that that would make a pass desirable. I've not it, seen it's it. It's sort of strange to me that you would that you would yield um a move, right? So I think the reason you'd yield a move is because you so there's two reasons I can see. One is that you uh, actively don't want to go first, right? So if you're defending something and you don't want to have the first move, you want the other player to go first so that you're so that you're defending because defense has a huge advantage, right? Like which right. again Brian will confirm to you that that's the truth because <laughs> boy did he lose to like the fact that I ha he ran into a attack where my lord had archers and had of course horses and he didn't have archers so i got to do archers first and then horses first so i had so i put like five hits on him before the fight even started on his end right so defending is very strong so in any case <laughs> yeah that's one reason the second reason is i could see is you're just hunkering down right and moving right. incurs provender right so, well i guess that's the thing right is that 
like in terms of turn turn economy, like any anything that you would do in terms of an action is going to have a preventer cost associated with Probably, it. Probably, right? Except for forage, uh, if you just sit down and forage. forage. But maybe you don't need right. to, maybe you don't always need to forage, right? So right. I I find it's going to be less likely to happen. Um, but you but it could but you could be in a situation where that would happen. Also, if you only have one lord out, <laughs> which which Brian has now. You know, not that we're going to go in. We're in the second round there, too. But, like, that's right. where you'd be like, oh, cool. You only have three command cards per lord. So you're going to have to throw in some pass cards. Right? Right. So, so I guess it, maybe that it's for corner wonder, pieces like that, right? Right. I, I guess. And then, you know, so in terms of when the preventer is actually when you have to feed the troops, if you don't move that troop an entire phase or an entire round, when does it get when we shift from campaign to to levy does it actually check the food i, I guess i'm wondering it's like can you actually go without feeding a unit if you don't move them i think so that's a weird like corner case it's weird right but you but but to be clear i also never fed knut and Abel in the first round right yeah so yeah if you don't move them they don't feed they, they don't they feed. don't need to eat for 40 days <laughs> they're just they're fasting that, for that, 40 it, days <laughs> they're doing a sleep maybe when they're on the move they're just extra hungry yeah you know like yeah. it's like in all this equipment and siege weaponry around pretty much you know, i think you, you want an extra snack after that exactly just a little siege snack as a treat so where we are right now is uh i let's see what's going on here i have three preventer and four carts rudolph has two and two and yaroslav has one card and nothing so i could first forage Actually, I can't. I can't. I can't forage because I didn't ravage, right? So I could forage. Um, I have three command actions, right? Yeah. Well, and so the so a, so a couple of things now, right? I I personally think I need to go in here with all three. That's what I think I need to do, and then I need to because I need to see what you're like, what you're gonna do about that, right? Right. Um, it seems like it's going to be decisive either way, right? Because well, if you stay in the field, we're going to have a field battle on the two by three grid where I fill all three slots and you only fill two slots. Right? Yeah. Another thing you can do, I think, is you can go into the uh, stronghold with both or with one and withdraw with the other. If you were worried that I would lock you in there, right? Because if you right. ever, if you ever decide to sally, because you're like, ah, sh I need to get out of here. I need to attack on the field. Then you're the attacker. Right, then you're no longer the defender. Whereas mm. if you stay your ground, you're of course the defender. And if you withdraw into the stronghold, I would have to storm it later, and then you're also the defender. Right. Right. So, I think I'm going to go in. By the way, I'm going to. I'm also going to try to never scroll below my lords if I can help it, so that you don't see my plan. Right. And so it's not plan. super obvious what I'm what I'm doing. Because I, right. do, I, I do think that's pretty big. But also, it's a learning game, so I'm not, I don't care. About, to be clear, I'm going to try not to do that, but I also don't care. Right. right. At, at the moment, like, I'm not, like, I'm occasionally, if you mention that you're pointing at something, I'll, I'll look over on the stream. But what I have right now is, is I have you're my looking, window of, of, the, of the rally of the troops, and I have it minimized so that I can see the chat. Got it. Um, to the right, but otherwise, okay. yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to play it straight. So, Great. So I'm gonna, um, but I, it, it's good practice. Anyway. I'll try to when I to not just straight up point. I'll always name. I'll try to name places as much as I can so that it's right. not that so it's not that clear. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just mark. Well, first I'm gonna. Here's the thing. I'm curious again. If I I have four carts, so if I hit supply now, I should be able to supply from both Dorpat and Odinpa. Not that it matters because they won't be able to carry it all. Think. We'll see. If I hit supply, I think this is going to go to five. Supply, and I click here and here. Whoops. No, that's not what happened. Undo. Supply. Set, so, select supply route and seven carts. Seven carts. Why can't. So if I click here. Nope. Trace. Oh, trace route because there's two. Okay, okay. Interesting. That would that wouldn't have been a hard algorithm to implement, to just figure. Oh, it out automatically where, trace yeah. it for you. Yeah. 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 So I got so that got me to. Interesting. Why am I why am I only at four? Why am I only? That's the thing I don't understand. I still fully don't fully understand supply, and the the rules don't make it any easier for me. Right. 
If I hit supply, right. it's saying set, select supply source. Okay, this one. Trace it through here. Right. See it out. Supply course. Up. Five carts, right? So that was two carts. And now it's saying su select supply source and route. Door pad. Right. And now I'm back on actions and it didn't go to five. Right? Hmm. It stayed at four. And I'm like, why can't I supply from both? Right. That I do. You come through the rules and see if there's anything for like a supply cap. Maybe there's a, I mean, it might be a bug in the implementation. I do not know. John, this is not Spelunky. It is not Spelunky, John. <laughs> Welcome uh, to the stream, John. So I don't know why that doesn't work. Um, oh, also, I have the option to use the legate, which would give me an extra command, and then the legate would go back to the William of Modena card, and I don't care. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. So uh, one thing that it calls out is that to draw multiple provender per supply action, a lord must have one usable transport for each provender along each way used by each route from each source. That's a lot of each. <laughs> That's a lot of each. Yeah, I was, I was like, let's let's try that again. Um, so so I guess transport per provender per way per route per source. So does that mean that the four? Because it's look here. It says I have when I do the supply. It says select supply source and route seven carts. Like it actually says that I have four, uh, five, six, seven. So it's counting all the carts we have here, not just Herman's right. carts. Then if I click on door pot, now it says, so now I went to four. So that happened. I went to th three to four provender and it says supply, select supply source and route five carts. So that cost two carts, right? Right. Now, this should also cost two carts, right? Right, if you're tracing the south path through... Um... Right, so I click on this. And now it's asking me whether I want to go through this or Kurumpa, right? And I don't really... It's, they're both two, sp two spots away, right? So I click on the bottom one. And then that's it. it my preventer didn't go up. And... Supplied seat at Dorpot, seat at Odenpa. But my provender did not change. Maybe Rudolph got it? Wait, was I not? Let me pay, let me undo. No, Rudolph didn't get yep, it. Yeah, we track it to see. No. Rudolph didn't get it. So I don't know if that's a bug or I don't know. It, I mean, it is odd. It shows in the actions on, on the right. It does show that you're seating at both places as intended. It does. Right? It does. But it, but it but it is weird that you're is only if I getting start at the open. bottom. Right. I got a provender from Odenpa, right? But now if I pick Dorpat second, I click on it, and I don't think anything changed. Even though it says seat at Dorpat. Well wait. I think No, you're right. Yeah, it's weird. It's a little bit weird. Because I've definitely had situations where I only had two carts, and I was close to both. I was, I think, I was in in another <clears> game. <throat> I was in this spot, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. Ugania, um, and I supplied from there. And I had one cart, and I got two supply. I got two provender, right? Because I was like directly adjacent to both Dorpot and Odenpa. And I was like, huh, interesting. That should be one because I have. I only have one cart. So I'm not so a supply is like either the either the implementation is bugged or I just don't get it because the wording in the rules is not easy. Right, I was gonna <laughs> say that it's. I, I feel like we need a, a full sentence parse. Yeah, it's to, like, to like really break I'm gonna, down what's going on. Yeah, let me go to that too. Right. Uh, yeah, it's four six two is what I was the section I was looking at. Yeah, to add provender, the active lord must have or share at least one usable transport per provender. For each provider. intervening way crossed. Cross along any route. Cross <laughs> along yeah. any route to a source. For each intervening way. So that would mean to me exactly the top one would be two. Right? I'm going two steps to Dorpot or or whatever. And then I use another two. To draw multiple vendor, a lord must have one usable transport for each provender along each way used by each route from each source. Yeah, so that to me would, in my head, that means four, and I have seven. 
Right. Right. I mean, I guess as a postscript to this, I mean, we can we can take this video. Uh, Rally the Troops does have a Discord community, um, and right. they do sometimes field rules questions there. I mean, we could point to this. Um, I think it would be easier to point to the video. Yeah, yeah. Try, Let's not try linger on it. And also, this is taking forever yeah. right now because, yeah, because if it, if Herman only had three carts, and it would be, oh, maybe you can't share carts across lords, so that's why I'm not getting the full two. But this just seems like it's potentially a bug. I'll be honest. I think right. this feels. Yeah, like I, a bug. I think it's worth. I, I can raise it there, um, or I don't know if you're yeah. there. Um, but, I'm not... but we can raise it there, and then maybe postscript this if we find right. something yeah, funky I'll, in the rule. I'll, I, weirdly enough, I'm not on that. I'm trying to not be on every Discord under the sun. But this is like <laughs> this is probably one that I should like the the rally of the troops Discord at this point. I'm like, yeah, what the hell am I doing? Like I play. I spend so much time on rally the troops every day. That I should I should definitely start being on that conversation. Um, okay, so in that case, I have three commands. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna forage and forage, right? Because I can just do forage, forage. And now, one second, did I just, yes, I did get the undo, undo the full thing. Forage, forage. Wait a second, wait a second. Let me try one more thing real quick. Yeah, I'm, 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 turns out I'm just blind. Of course I'm getting, hey, we, we just spent 10 minutes on nothing. <laughs> because it went to the second. Because it went to it, the second. Because it, 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 so the individual cap at four, the overall cap per Lord at eight. So that. <laughs> I, it went to, no, no, it went to the second and the second provender has a and different. The second one has, has a, a different, different color. Thing. It's like, I didn't color? see it. So I didn't notice that I was at five. Oh. Okay, so it worked. Sorry, we're we're really bad at this, um, or I'm sorry, I'm really bad at this. It is weird. I yeah, I see that now. Like yeah, it's like a lighter. See like if the I, other ones if I undo, and then it's, yep. it's three and nothing, and now I'm gonna supply and do all these things I kept on doing, and now I'm at five. Right, I just kept on staring at the times four. All right. Um, well, see now you don't have to join the rally of the troops Discord. We solved it. There you go. <laughs> exactly. So. so now the thing is, now we have a total of five six seven provender and seven carts right so at that point now foraging or supplying or doing any of that stuff again is p absolutely pointless right right also going into that spot will potentially initiate a siege which will I immediately end the turn right so i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna so now what's gonna happen is i'm gonna grab and this is obviously this is not easy to see i think they need to actually do a better job of this so i'm gonna zoom in a bit Oops, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to let's try this again. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Uh, and now you'll notice if I click on uh, Rudolph and Yaroslav before the march, they also get a little yellow outline. Mm -hmm. right? okay. So what that means is that my marshal is grabbing them to move along. Right. Um, and it's important to right. do that because if you march in here without that, it trigger you. There's no undo after you start after you trigger a battle, right? Right. Once the siege, that, that's that's the the path. You know, that's right. the, the. I'm the, also the, going to grab the the, the, the legate. I'm bringing the legate with me. Right? Sure. Um, <laughs> so we're all marching into here. Boop. Right. And okay. now we're at the point of no return, where I can no longer undo. And now we're. I feel like I need to screenshot this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is too good right let me quickly grab a screenshot of this <laughs> and actually now it's just in the clipboard now i'd have to start some software to copy it somewhere but i guess i'll do that real quick Ugh, what am i doing ay, ay, ay. Nip and sketch. Uh, yeah i did that but now it's in the clipboard right and you know what forget it i don't care it's fine i'm not gonna go you can always clip it from the video later I can, but, but I yeah can. Also, I can so, okay. once the game's over, I can go back. I can rewind everything, right? So. Yeah, there you go. So, well, so now the so the command comes to me, and it says march, select lords, and destination to avoid battle. Exactly. So now so, you can probably individually figure out if you're going to stay or avoid battle, right? I'm pretty right. sure that they can individually pick whether they're going to retreat or withdraw or fight, right? Right. Yeah, when I click on one, I get the the the, the surrounding locations. So the Uzmen, the Zalcha River, Dubrovno to the east, and then Ostrov to the south. Um, weirdly, I guess. So is there a way for me to pick? Maybe a withdraw doesn't come 
let me let's look at this in the rules. I was gonna say it does not give me. Is this so, a classic? I can't no, no. withdraw into the stronghold because I wasn't in the stronghold I think, situation. No, 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 I think you can if you click on the Lord. I think the there there uh, when you withdraw your um, Lord mat gets a little bit dimmer, and the Lord disc goes down a little bit. It's very subtle and it's pretty hard to see. Let's see battle. Wait, no, we're not at battle yet, right? Where is this even? Where's withdraw? Clan command march. Maybe it's part of march. Approach. Oh yeah, avoid battle. Upon enemy approach, some or all inactive lords may move to one or more adjacent locales within this these restrictions. Lords may not avoid battle across any part of the way that the enemy used to approach. Lords may not avoid battle to any locale with an unbesieged enemy lord. Lords may not avoid battle unladen. They may take no loot. Uh, and take only provender equal to their own or shared transport that is usable on the way across which they are moving. Lords may discard their loot and any provender as needed to become unladen and thereby avoid battle. The approaching enemy lords receive and divide uh, among them any loot and provender so discarded, as if spoils. <clears throat> Mark avoiding lords as move fought. Uh, then comes withdraw. Upon approach or after battle, so that's the second thing. Withdraw, maybe... Oh, so maybe, that's the second phase then. Yeah. So upon approach okay, or after so... battle, the inactive side may withdraw some or all lords into its stronghold there, a number of lords up to siege capacity. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. So I think what's happening here is it's avoid battle, and then the second step is withdraw, is my guess, right. I hope. Yeah, I don't... Right. Well, I was going to say, the only options that I have are it, like to click on the lords and move and end avoid battle and then an undo, right? Yeah. I don't have the withdraw option yeah. yet. So I, I, I'm going to hang out... I'm going to hang out in Pushkov. Okay. Um, I am intending to, to ride out the siege there, hopefully. Good. So if I end avoid battle... Okay, and then now I have withdraw. So it says, March, select lords to withdraw into stronghold. Right. So now... Oh, yeah. And then, okay, now when I click them, they, go down. they, they actually seat down yep, for the Yep, that's down. what I saw, too. I see them. I, right. I saw you just seat both down. Now, if you look down on your lords, you'll see the Domash and Gavrilo are, right. like, slightly grayed out. They're a little out. more grayed out. Right. Yep. And that means they're in right. the stronghold. Right, so we end withdraw because that's what I want to do, right. and then now the command goes back to you. So now I'm now you're besieged, right? And so it's now I, I have, am besieged. I have no more actions, right? Because I that's it. It ended my turn. I'm gonna hit end command. Now I have to feed, uh, and you'll notice that your dudes for with so withdraw withdrawing it does not incur move fought. Right. Yeah. The, I I did think that was curious, right? Because it's yeah right. the, it, the, it, the little it, token it, does it, not it come there, so I don't have to resolve it. it you do. You do not. And now I'm going to feed from here, and I think I'm done with feeding. And now I may pay my lords, and I don't think I have any... Oh, no, Herman has coin. Hmm. I mean, Herman could pay either of these guys to, like, move up to four. Do I care? Well, do I care? You know what? Because we're in this weird situation, I think I do care a little bit. Just in case you get on the fringe where you you are not able to feed, you don't want to lose that guy. Since right, and it's not pick. like it's not like Herman's ever gonna pay Knud and Abel, right? So I'm like, right, no, okay. So let's just get rid of this coin and get yeah, that's what happened. So I'm done paying, and it's to you, right? Okay. So we started the siege of uh, of Pushkov, which if the, you look the at the calendar. It says Battle of Izborsk and Fall of Pskov. That's what happened. In, this is the historical account in the background, this little text in the calendar at the top. Right. right. So. <clears throat> All right. So now I have the prompt to pay my lords. Um, and and at, at this point, like, I, I, I don't have, um, I mean, I guess I have the coin from Nov Novgorod Vice, but. Um, the good news for I'm you okay is you can use that. So technically, I think you can even you could even pay Domash and Gravillo right now, even though they're besieged, because I right. think that your coin just is like basically ubiquitous, right? It's everywhere. Yeah. It's uh, it's modeling the overall uh, wealth of the city of Novgorod. I think. Right. You should. You, I don't know. Maybe you can't pay people who are besieged inside a, inside the walls. I don't know. Um... I, I don't know, like looking at this, if it if it I mean, right now both um, Gabrilo <laughs> and good. Tomash are further they're further out, right? The the yeah. one I was considering doing was Vladislav, Vladislav for which, the same reason that you were yeah. considering, which as well, you which right unlike me on. you can do that, right? Because you can you're again you're like oh 
<laughs> the, the gods <laughs> the gods have rained I'm... money on you right right so um, yeah you so can... i guess if i pay vladislav and i can I, I may pay vladislav with coin or loot so if i take the coin from novgorod viche and that moves him forward into that fourth slot up above on the, the is... season track yep that's true right yep so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that for now, just out of safety to see, you know, right. yeah. like you said, we did, we're close enough now in that second, um, that oh, second yeah. track. Um, so let's in pay. And then my first command is Vladislav. So right. I actually went north. Um, yeah, and... Now, and now you're in a situation that I was in where you don't know whether and when I am activating Knud and Abel. Right. And you're kind of between the two harbors. Right? Yes. Yeah, Kaibalovo is so, probably better. You know, so this is what I did too, right? I went to Kaibalovo and I went to Luga, and that was probably right. a step too far. Well, um, so one thing that I'm curious about is that if I actually press forward and go to Narwia here, um, you could do that. I was gonna say, so Narwia does not. So there's nothing there. That's just another like waypoint. Um, it doesn't have a victory point associated with it. No, you um, could you could ravage I could, there. You I could rav ravage. You can right? yes, you can ravage because you're not adjacent to a to an unbesieged lord, so it only costs one action instead of two. Right. If you're so if, yeah, as soon as you're adjacent to an unbesieged lord, it costs two. So I think I'm gonna try to ravage. Okay. Just just to get a victory point or a half victory point on the board. Right. And this may be an overcommit because we're going to see if Canoe and Nobble activate and, and start you'll hanging see, out. You'll find the out, board. right? You'll we'll, find, sure we'll find, find out, out real quick, won't we? Um, but I'm going to try to press here. And, and, and it is an interesting press, right? Because the, the Ravage only gives you a half victory point. You yeah. get a full victory point for Lu from for Luga and for or, Luga Luga and or, or Neva. Neva. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so we will see how that cat and mouse To be clear, sailing similar to sieging is a full command. So it's, a it's not full like, command. yeah, you can't use like, one of my first command is going to sail. No, you use your right. entire command card for, for sailing. Yeah, you're not going to um, do the three-hour tour and take both in one turn. No. Nope. Um, right. So, so, so we'll, but we'll, we'll go ahead and see. Let's see what I, ends up with that. Let me, let me, let me peek at my plan. Interesting, interesting plan. <laughs> Looking at the plan, I'm like I don't remember my freaking plan. I did the plan like the same day we did the last video, right? Um, so, yeah, you're. So you're, I will end command. You, and you have to feed. And I'm assuming yep. that Vladislav had provender. He did. Yeah, he had a provender off of the. Um, right. Yeah, we'll take a provender off that, and then in the feed. And, and then I may it. pay my lords, and I'm okay. I'll end pay, and now yeah. it's back to you. Okay, so now it's not even offering me to pay anymore because I don't have money, right? <laughs> so my next person is Rudolf. And so now okay. the thing that I think I'm going to do... <laughs> so Rudolf, you'll... Reminder, in the last levy phase, I levied a capability called Raiders. And yes. it says, this lord with horse once per command card, may ravage locale adjacent by trackway where no other mm. enemy lord. Right? So I can now ravage Ostrov or Dubrovno without moving. Right? Well, I think it'll be Dubrovno because it's trackway. Ostrov is waterway true. down. But, is, but yeah, your point true, right? still holds. So if I hit right? ravage, like yeah, I can ravage Zelcha River and Dubrovno. Right? Yes. Now, Rudolf doesn't have... I hate my... Like, did I... Why does Rudolf have a boat? so lame <laughs> good job rudolph <laughs> um so so okay so a couple things now i think ah, what am i what's my what am i plan what's my plan what's my plan rudolph has three commands right so the question right. now for me becomes is i don't need all three of these dudes here to besiege you right that seems just right. that just seems like overkill i kind of need two because i don't want you to come out and like overrun one lord by flanking because if you come if you right. sally with two and i only have one lord sieging then you're gonna then we're gonna go back into like a two by three grid where you have someone yeah. on the flank and i don't right it's gonna be disadvantage it'll be a disadvantage right and your guys oh. are strong enough to probably mess mess herman up maybe probably is my guess right um because your guys have a lot of stuff right they have they both have oh you also have stone kremlin 
but you have Luzhniki yes. and Strelzi and like a bunch of other stuff, right? I've actually, actually two man, you gave them all. Yeah, I did two Strelzi. Yeah, that that Strelzi. was part of in the the levy last time was right. we had to do we had to do some uh, chicanery with the uh, with the the held cards to, so to get to one, where I could have two, Strelzi. three, and I'm gonna do one, two, three. No, I'm. I think I'm just gonna play it safe and i'm probably gonna because i'm not gonna go in both directions and i'm probably gonna go north just to like make sure that um that blaslav isn't running rampant up there right but first right. first i'm gonna uh ravage dubrovno dubrovno yeah right and then right. for my second action i'm gonna go to zelcher river i think which is it's moving laden because I have loot and provender. Whatever, whatever. Probably just gonna get rid of the, rid of a provender, because I mean staying here just makes no sense. So I go there. It's gonna be like march laden. No. Um, discard. Oh, it actually says discard loot. March laden with one. Cause, right, because loot will all. You're always laden with loot. You're always laden right? with loot. Yeah. So. If I want to use the loot for anything else, I would have to stay, and that, I don't think that makes sense. So I'm gonna discard the loot, march unladen, and I have right. one more action. And so now I can just straight up ravage there, yep. right? Which I think is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna ravage yep. there, and that ends my turn. I will end command, and now I feed. And I have three provender. And I fed, and that's it. And feed, and it's your turn. All right. So that was my idea. I wanted to like besiege you, but then also split off. Right. Yeah. Right. Basically, press me back into the stronghold, and then break off to to potentially move. Right. Because you you do have the additional lord there to to press that advantage. Right. So. And then all the while, I'm getting like half a victory point, half a victory point. Right. So right. now it's one. So now right now the score currently is two to one half, two to one and a half. Right. And. So, and, and so now also one thing, um, cause we were talking about kind of the give and take on, okay, you get a full victory point for taking the, the port. Um, as long as you hold it, right. I can reclaim, I, I can remove that victory point right. or, or, or turn well, it yeah. if I get it back. Right? And you don't know how many activations of Knudenabla I even put in there, right? Well, right. We have no idea what the plan looks like there. Right. Um, so now what I was going to say is contrasting that with ravaging, is there a way to flip that victory point for ravaged territories or is that pretty much just done so that's like... done but and this won't this will not affect this game so let me just preface by saying this will not affect this game in the spring of every year there's a growth phase and in that mm. growth phase i think what happens if i got this right is uh all ravaged markers are halved um and i think of mm. course there's a rule for rounding up or down um, okay. And then they ha and then basically you decide where they get removed, something like okay. that, right? Because what that means is like it's, it's just like oh stuff grew back, and then and you actually lose the victory points, right? So you're collecting right. a bunch of ravage markers and then hoping that or not hoping you know that if you get like three victory points from ravage you're gonna go back down to one and a half after spring, right? Something like that. I don't remember the exact rule, but there's definitely something called growth. Let's see, I, you know what? I've gotten better at using these this these rules because they do have a glossary at the end, so I could just go to down here and look at growth, and then jump immediately no to the, the section. Interesting. It doesn't say growth down here. Maybe under ravage if it shows or like as part of. Could have sworn that there's something that has to do with. Uh, let's see, grow. Well, it does say 491 growth removes some ravaged after Rapetitsa. 491. So 491. Right. So that may be a new rule because it's in this yellow part at the top, right? Mm. So second edition rule, maybe not glossary yeah. down below. Okay, yeah. End campaign. Um, 491 grow. First, there if grow. turn 8 or 16, end mm. of each Rasputitsa, Teutons, then Russians, remove enemy ravage markers down to half their number rounded up. Okay. Right. So that's a new, it sounds like it wasn't in the first edition, right? Right. So for now, for the quick start scenario that we're doesn't, looking at, I mean, impact. it is more, it, it doesn't really impact. It's still more nope. like slash and burn. Like, 
Yep, you know, does not impact us sure. at right. all. So that's the only way I know of uh, Ravage markers being removable, and it will not impact this game. Okay. All right, so then um, for my command, um, I actually have Domash that is um, within uh, within Siege right now. So right. I have the options to Sally or Pass. Um, I think we've established that Sallying right now, because I don't know that I can Sally... I think you can. So both. again, let's look at the rules. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that when you sally, you can always sally everyone. Let's see. Okay. Sally besieged attack. Uh, relief sally. No, that's relief sally is different. Relief sally is when when a side approaches a locale which is also besieged that you can like come out. Um, so one second battle. It would be part of. What, I think I think it's March, right? I think Sally is a type of March. Is that true? No, it's not. Well, it says, uh, so a besieged lord may use a command to attack besiegers in a battle. All besieged lords there attack, okay? So, so yes, all besieged lords that are a part of that siege are included in the attack. They do not receive any walls or garrison bonus. Right. The defenders receive siege works as if storming. Right. So I'd have a, I'd have a wall of one. Right, because I have one right. siege work. Using right. defender, oh yeah, the defend, yeah. The siege lord may use a command to attack besiegers in a battle. All besieged lords there attack. Wow, so you don't even have the option. You can't come out with one. Like you're yeah, always. Yeah, it's, it's basically if if you're coming out, you're coming out with everybody. You're coming out with everybody, um, which makes a lot. And, of and sense, I mean, right? I think I, I was gonna say intrinsically, I think that makes sense. Let's yeah. like, oh, let's just half Sally. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't really see that that being a, an optimal play. Yeah. So the um, so the bad news for you, of course, means means that that mean that makes you the attacker, and me the yes. defender. But we would have there would be no flank. Uh, there would be no flank, and uh, I would I would have a little bit of an advantage on top of being the defender, which is that I have a wall of one, right? right? Which always sounds like it's a joke, but like then when you suddenly roll a one and some of your hits don't go through, it's suddenly not. I that was gonna funny. say, it, it, yeah, I mean it's 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 funny up until the point where where it robs you of a hit, exactly. um, and and there's so. just enough there. Um, yeah, so and, I did and, I, I did that on purpose, to, right? I'm like, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna if, leave just enough there for this to look right. not not very uh, enticing to you, right? And, and if the if our play of the Shores of Tripoli has taught us anything, is that the dice are not our friends, um, and that we yeah. should probably expect the worst but when man, it comes it, to that that's, sort of thing. That, but, that, <laughs> the, it, it, it's just yeah, the randomness in that game is a little bit too too extreme. It's a little, a little over the top here. It's a little more measured. Yeah. Uh, there's a little more strategic consideration that goes into this. Yeah, in that one, it's <laughs> like, well, this is what I'm going to do. Let's roll the dice. And it's like, it's one of those instances where you could look at it and be like, oh, but randomness is not good. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not what's happening here. It's just used right. in like way too heavy handed way. And then you have like giant ship battles that are like multiple frigates and gunboats and not a single hit is made. Right. And I'm like, I don't think that's how ship combat went down. Right. Not not in the same way that they modeled the land combat. Yeah. But anyway, we're we're getting into shores of trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so anyway, in this right? case, the one you know, it's still a one in six. It's not a one in fifty, right? So yeah. so, so I it, I, did, I did this on, on how purpose. Aggressive, right? right, right. You set you set this up. Yeah. And it really is is how how aggressive do I want to be? Well, the bad considering news for the rest you is of my if, plan. Sorry. The go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say considering the rest of my plan. Does it even make sense to press the advantage, or do we pass and then potentially see what unfolds later, see if anything becomes more adva advantageous? Down so the I line? think I think the problem for you, here's the problem for you in terms of like the the outcome of this, right? Right. You're gonna lose if you like if I just stay there, I think you lose. I don't know, right? But if you just stay in, if you go outside, you may lose as well. Like I think if I were you. In the last turn, I would not have put both in the... I would have had one hang back to hold the fort, and the other I would have like made a free agent. Right? Okay. Maybe even down to Ostrov, so you can go over to let Gallia and start ravaging. Because I think right. now your problem is going to be, if they both stay in there for the full second turn, the only way you're going to get victory points is with Vladislav. Right. Vladislav makes a half a victory point per turn. I, on the other hand, have uh, Knudnabel for, like, assuming I'm still going to activate them, get a victory point at least. And then, what's his name? Rudolf might still have some activations and get some more Ravaged markers, right? So I don't right. think that, like, unless, 
unless you're using two more of lattice lab activations i don't see how right lattice, yeah if i don't see how you're going to get enough victory points to catch up because right. right now I'm a, I'm a half a victory point ahead so right. that's just me saying that if this game went longer yeah maybe staying inside would make sense but the way it stands right, right. now is i think you can't win if you don't sally but that's also right. not great right? so yeah you're... well it's, it's sort of suboptimal right yeah. it's like we knew we were building up to that right. and I, I guess it's like it, that's that's just sort of, sort of how the first turn played out yeah. i do think and it doesn't like I guess it doesn't really matter which lord that I I sally with, right? I don't like think it I guess does looking... because once once we get into battle, right? Then is then comes the part where we decide in that in that battle array, that's when we decide where. I wish I wish I was good at this card at this at these rules, right? That's where we then decide where we're going to go in the in the in the array, and I don't think that the center is determined by who sallies, right? Right. Um, all so lords blah, I, blah, blah, blah. marker and then battle ray. Battles played a particular lord. Either their lord cylinders on the battle mat, as players prefer. Ba 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 ba. Right. Right. So. So I, I, yeah. So I mean, it, it, like ultimately, they're both coming out and they're both sailing anyway. There, it doesn't seem like there's any benefit of waiting to do it with Gavrilo, assuming that I have a command for Gavrilo later in the plan. I don't so, know because right? I've never. Seen... And, and yeah, I was gonna say I, I I'm not from what I can tell I can't really discern anything in the rules for that either. Um, and, and what I would say is that if I'm going to Sally, like you said, like waiting, I might as well do it now, because if I do have actions for Dimash and Gavrilo later, assuming they survive, th then I, I actually get to use those actions. So to here's the thing you could do, right? Which I wouldn't recommend also. But, so the first, the first thing I'd like to say strategically is I think it still made sense for you to withdraw into the fort yeah. because otherwise you would have had to fight three Lords. Right. Yeah, fighting that in the field, and that would have been... So now like, you only like, have to fight to push two. That. You would have been yeah. on the defense, which yes. would have given you an advantage, but you would have fought three lords. And I don't right. I don't know the game well enough to know whether that would have been better than the two on the attack. I, I'm not sure. But the I'm going to say that it feels the, bad regardless. Yeah, the other thing is, you can come out and sally, and then the battle begins, and you can immediately concede, which would mean the battle would end after one round of battling. Right? Right which would allow you to withdraw without losing all your stuff. Um, but right. each of your hits would only count for half, right? Because you're, because you're basically in, I'm, you're, I'm in pursuit because you're trying to get away. Yes. Eh, well, it's just, it's, who knows? <laughs> this is, but this is, I think this is what makes the, it's an interesting strategic consideration here, right? Yeah. Like, and I, I think, as as Brian says to me every now and then in, on our Discord channel, he's like the like the way I narrate these is always like makes it like comical, right? Because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'll take the hit. No, it, let me throw. Let throw. We'll throw ourselves into the. And it's like, cause it's like kind of. It always feels Monty Python esque to me, right? I know right. this is a serious topic and these fights actually happened and people died, but it's like for what right it's usually what for what right because again if you read the history of this conflict and you look at the boundary here between russia and estonia that's still the boundary still between there. russia it has not changed right the same way the boundary between france and germany did not change as a result of four years of the first world war right so yeah it's like, i mean look when we get to the point when we play the game where we reenact the, the the scottish rebellion or whatever we can we can go to braveheart as like a touch point right and, and someone can say you go you'll never you could take our lives but never take our freedom and then right. it becomes a much more dramatic thing but right now right. not right now our touch point is monty python and right. i'm gonna sell it for um okay so you're so, okay array attacking lords so now i think you're in the situation where you have to decide who's going to be the center who's going to be off to the side I think that's the thing because it's still like right now it says waiting for Russians array attacking lords. Right. Um, so I've I've never been in a situation in this in in rally the troops where I had to do this. But my guess is that you can now pick. I think whether Domash or Gavrilo are in the center or the left is my is my guess. Yeah, it, it has Domash in the center by default. I can click on Gavrilo and then probably pick one of the left or the right. I might. Um, I think you can probably even pick the middle and put Domash off to the center, uh, off to the side. I think maybe not, maybe not. But, um, that, but, 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 but that should be in the rules, right? So it should say something like when you sally, well, this may... right? 
this where? may this may be the point where okay, sallying who you sally forth with automatically becomes the center, and maybe that's that's the, right the sort now. of advantage you're using uh, out. Okay, events time relief sally array battle array Pl players array their participating lords either the lord cylinders or the battle mat as play as players prefer attackers position their lords then defenders do a side must as able have a lord each in up to three possible front positions left center and right um the active lord must start the active lord must start at the front center there you go. There you go. So that's always the case. That's not even in Sally. That's just always the case. That's just always the, attackers the case. Attackers then fill in front, left, and or right positions with one other lord present each, if any, and put any remaining lords in reserve. The defender must put one lord directly opposite of each front attacking lord, first in the center, then left or right as able. There you go. Done. So you okay. can't change, and it doesn't matter where you put Gavrilo in that case, right? Right. And, and gonna... I don't know, like... Yeah, like Gavrilo left or right, that's going to be on a flank either way. Right. So, so, um, it does, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I can't really do this. I don't know, looking at the, in terms of the map, like you said, left or right doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter because I'm gonna, the here's map. the thing, what's, why it doesn't, doesn't matter, right? Because what's going to happen is I have to decide whether I put Herman or Yaroslav up against Omash and or Gavrilo. That's my choice, right? Because you, right. you'll just array them now and then you'll probably pass to me. And then I have to figure out. This is an inter this is interesting, right? Because first of all, Gavrilo, they all he has uh, um, light archery, so two of his have light archery, so that's going to do one archery hit. Um, so I have to wonder whether I want to put my Balistari up against Gavrilo and have Yaroslav up against Domash, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Weirdly enough, I think that's what I'm going to do, and it may be a mistake. Maybe a mistake, right? But I think that's. I think gonna... just even in terms of general weight, like Herman has the more has more of an army, and Gavrilo is sort of the stronger of the two between Gavrilo and Dimash. So I think even like even outside of getting into the individual units, if we just think about like overall size, like the bigger right. the bigger army is lining up against the bigger army, or, or at least the most more impo imposing army. Right. Gavrilo's got the same count, but I but Gavrilo has the additional. Oh night, boy, so. attacker events! I hope that that held card of yours isn't a screw Herman or something card or some other weird stuff. Uh, well, oh, um, oh, so oh. I my held card is a bridge. Um, and this is the one, this is what we were discussing last time. And I don't know that, that we knew what this, we don't know all. what this means, right? Understand. It's like he melee strikes with units up to twice round number. Um, and I may play on front center Teutonic Lord in non-winter battle. So we're in non-winter battle. There is a front center Teutonic Lord. Um, I don't if know I play this means. bridge, we're, we're getting, you know what? For science, we're, okay. we're going to play okay. it. Okay. Okay. I, it's um, such a weird, though, some of the wording in this game is... Yeah, waiting for Russians. Bridge. Yeah, so it says play on the center lord. Um, and the only one that I can play it on is is on Yaroslav. Okay, so now I have a bridge. Hold. He right, melee which... strikes with units up to twice round number. Okay. Right. So so I don't know what that... I, so I don't know. I'm I have say, the option. Here, here's what I think this means. I think this means you. You. He. Right. right? may play on but he and i think you're the he in this right right so so i'm gonna go ahead and battle like i have options for um All concede right. the field concede battle or undo and we're gonna battle let's let's fight it out okay o ogre so battle I'm style obviously gonna fight okay defending right, archery, so defending archery. So now i herman has archers so he's gonna assign you have to assign a crossbow hit to i think i assume give relo but i don't yeah. know Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, looking at this. Um, Keep in mind, well, it's actually, a crossbow, think... so it's minus two. Right. Yeah. So your your men at arms. Your reload's the only one that. Right. Men at arms have one. And um, your, your knight would have two, and the other ones. I think one's the lowest. I don't think it goes to zero. I'm not sure that's true though, because the unarmed might just because the undefended or not not uh, the unarmored. I don't know what happens if they get hit by Balistari. Maybe they just don't roll and they're just gone. I don't know. I mean, I guess, so the <laughs> options that I have under Gavrilo, like if I just take the militia off the bottom, 
Like I think that's just gonna die if you click on the militia. Right, I think it would just outright die. Yeah. Right. Yep, I'm pretty um, sure that's the case. And then and and so so that for protection looking at this. But keep so in mind I, that your archery is only well, here's the thing, your archery is one half times everything that's like light brown, and you'd still mm -hmm. get in one hit because it would be point five and it's always rounded up. Right. Would it still resolve that hit even if we assign this crossbow hit first? Yes. Okay. Yes, it would. So, I think, given that, it, like, given that the Mast Archers, would, under the idea that it's going to apply even if I put it on the Militia, I think the Militia is, like, where we'll tag that. Yeah. And then so attacking archery. See, it was militia one. So even though it was minus two, you can never go under one. So if you roll you a one, it will still be able to block it. Right. right. Okay. So now right. you're you're gonna yeah you're gonna give me half a hit from Gavrilo, right? Um, so you have to click on Gavrilo probably, just on his. Well, it arm. has for attacking archery. It has it gives me. I can't click on Dimash. It will allow me to do that. Um, I don't know if there's. I don't. I don't know if there's a reason to do one before the other. You probably doesn't matter. I'm gonna say that you're. I'm gonna, gonna hit... do Gavrilo, just in case. I'm gonna go ahead and do Gavrilo. Okay. Um, okay. So if we do Gavrilo, so and... oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so siege works is one. There we go. See, it's always funny until it's not. So the it's siege like, works yeah. just blocked your shot, right? Yep. It's exactly yeah, that, that one was... in six we talked about. It just blocked your shot. George Tripoli, um, love it. All right, so um, now I do have the other attacking archer. Right, so that archer um, is so gonna, that's, that's going to do a hit. Yeah, so that's going to do a hit, and that went through. So now I have to yeah. assign a crossbow hit, and I think, I think I'm going to just I don't I don't want to lose any of my strong units, so I think I'm just going to take the hit. There we go. Take the militia. So now I now that now I do defending horses, right? And I think, again, the order does not matter because they're going to go against the person on the other side. Right. So I'm going right. to do Herman first. You got to assign five hits. Jeez. Right? Well, it's because two for each knight and one for the sergeant. Right. Yeah. So now comes okay. the fun part. Right. Now comes the part where you're like, for, <laughs> for freedom. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, right. so and looking, so I've got and so I would two like minute arm. I said this last time in the in the first video already, but in the but when I was playing this with Brian, I had one minute arms in as a garrison. wasn't even like one right. of my lords who absorbed five hits in a row. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I, cal and, and I, I calculated the likelihood. It was three point two percent or something. <laughs> it's like, oh god. Yeah, I don't know that the dice are going to be as friendly to me this time. Um, I, I have the feeling that won't be the case. Um, the light horse are unarmored. The light horse um, is going to. The light horse is going to go under. Would go under if I put it there. So yeah. if I want any opportunity at all to tank any of these hits, it has to go to either the men at arms or the knight. All right. And the knights, for protection, I'd go one to four. For the men at arms, it's one to three. Right. Um, the knights have more strikes coming. They have two battle, one storm on strikes. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say, looking, do do do. I'm looking at the other notes on this. Like I don't see anything else that really. I so mean, it's just if I could make a suggestion, which I don't, which you should not follow at all, right? Is <laughs> I would probably try to absorb it with the men at arms the, and, because yeah, your knight just has, going lower. Because your knight hits has two hits it has right? two hits yeah that's right. that's what i was like now your your, the, your bad situation might be ooh, ooh, uh. yeah the first one already oh. the first one already killed the first man at arms right so now you have to yeah. ask yourself what am i going to do with these other four hits um yeah this is uh, again <laughs> this is one of the places i think that this is one of the places where this game shines the brightest yes right this is such an interesting little game right it's such a cute little game inside of a game inside of a game that's right. like it's like ooh, <laughs> ooh. right that and, and, and had a and, bad and, night's and, sleep that men of arms regiment had a bad night's sleep <laughs> mule, but yeah they had yeah, like that's sick they got sick they had Their food poisoning run, right? like the yeah they they, they farmed they they were like still studying their cookbooks 
from like from the from the lovely summer where they were like learning how to cook i i can come up with infinite dumb stories <laughs> yes Look, look, seven preventer is hard to carry around, right? Maybe they just got distracted because they had an extra loaf of bread instead. This of is yet, you're not going to believe you're not going to believe the next line that I'm going to give you. But yesterday, when I was talking to Brian about this, I was like, maybe this is a good use of Chat GPT. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Where it's like we we, we will storify. Look at uh, the outcome of a battle and then narrate yeah. it in a in yeah. some arbitrary way, right? That's like, yeah, they ate bad food, or they <laughs> they were all like sleeping. Or something weird, right? And you're like, okay, and that could be they like an, enough that wouldn't be in the log. Yeah. That would be in the story log that you can like optionally turn yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be funny. Yeah. Um, let's try, man. I guess let's try another minute arms. There you go. That works. Aim for the two. Okay. Only three press more hits. Impress my luck. Oh. Three for the minute arms. Ooh. Okay. Can we go one more? Oh my we god. We can go one more. Oh my god. Really? All right, one more. Can we do this? Okay. No, we can't. Okay. Well, but still, I can't complain about tanking three hits. No, that you can't pretty good. you can't complain about tanking three hits, I think. Right? So now uh I'm gonna send over Yaroslav's hits, which I think is only gonna be three. Yeah, it's three hits. Be three. Yep. Um, so um uh, the militia is unarmored. I don't want to. I, I still want to have the opportunity to tank. So we're going to try the men at arms here as well for Dimash. Oh, tank boy. for a two. Fail for a five. Fail for a four. Dang it. Okay. Well, okay. that's what we got. So now um, you got, you so, got. So now you got three horse strikes and two horse strikes coming, right? And again, yeah. the order won't matter, right? You just click on them and then I have to yes, figure we'll out. We'll go Gavrilo. Okay, um good. three hits coming over three hits Five, so six, i too i'm gonna try to take these so here's the interesting thing now right like i i sit here <laughs> the i've already assigned my horses right so yes. i want to maximize my hits on the on the on the foot soldiers so i'm right. actually going to try to absorb this with uh with the so, so, with the knight with the knight because it's already resolved right tanked it two Tanked it. Three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there's one. Okay, there's one. But I okay, fine. Fine. Right. I mean you tank two hits. I mean that's yeah. That's not too bad. And then Domash coming Same over, over here. Two, two hits. One. Okay. Nope. Two. Oh god. Woof. Okay. That was okay. rough. Okay, defending foot strike. Ugh, that sucked. Okay, so you're still gonna take another three hits here from my from my Right. So for Gorillo, so that like I want the opportunity to try and tank this with the knight. Um, it ain't working. Um, so this is going to be a route. Yeah, that's going to be a route. Yep. Um, oh, and then so Dom, so for Domash, it's the same thing here. Um, let's try to tank it with Sergeant. So he has to tank the rest of it, right? He has to tank the rest of it, yeah. yeah. So he tanked the, re he, the Sergeant, tanked that one. Yeah. Um, and then... I have, you have one, um, you're gonna do one hit. I have, I'm gonna do one hit. And this is gonna kill for sure. Yeah, done. Okay, well now we go to round two, right? And now yeah, you can second round now this. you can figure out whether you wanna concede because I So if to be clear, if you don't concede and you have to route, then you're gonna lose everything you're holding. Like all your yeah. carts, all your provender, all your boats, everything. Um, if you right. If you concede and survive the round, then you would be able to defend. You'd be able to get away and take all your stuff unladen, which you, I think, that's all you'd, you'd be unladen, right? Yeah. But all your hits would only count for half, on right. on your way out. Um, way and I, out. I think I, I don't think you can win this. I don't think so. so I, I might be able to. I might be able to take Yaroslav, but Herman is still way too. Right is in way too good a spot so i mean i think conceding here is probably yeah, the only way you might you know. still not make it out alive even with the yeah conceding. i was gonna say yeah it's it's pretty right. it's pretty sketchy right. so, so now so you've got the trip. pursuit right that's that pursuit marker that says your hits only count for half yep. um but your melee strikes twice up strikes with units up to twice the round number right so you probably you're. By the way, you we didn't notice this, but you did hit twice with your melee units, um, 
on 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 Domash against Yaroslav. That's why I took so many hits, right? Right. I don't know if you noticed it, but that, that so this well, this bridge I definitely happened, for, right? So, so now you would the, hit for attacking foot or what, now you would hit four times. Or... Like if this dude survives your little melee unit, right? Um, or and your and your knights, they'll strike four times, not twice, four times, because we're in round number right. two. Um, so we'll see. So first, um, so first, I'm gonna do Herman is gonna send a crossbow hit your way. Uh, nope. So that's that's done with the horse. Um, now the defending horse is gonna strike Yaroslav. That's a four. That's four hits. Oh, no, that's, that's that's actually fine. four hits from that's from all the horses, right? Because now yeah, you're signing so all four hits from Yaroslav and Herman, which yeah, probably is, is going to be the end of you. Is my strong. Yeah, there's assumption. no. There we yep. go. Okay, so Russians lost. Raid removed siege markers, and now you have to do losses, which I think means which of your units from the from your mats, the the routed units, which of them are dead forever, and which of them come back into your forces. I think that's what that means. Right, so you're going, to, you're going to be clicking on five, six, seven, ten units. Ten units. <laughs> now, yeah. here's the, here's the bad, great. before you start, here's the bad news. Actually, I'm not sure because you conceded. So potentially, but, but you didn't get out alive, right? So I think all no. of these rolls would normally be to your armor level. But I yeah. think because you didn't concede and didn't get out alive, I think they all go to one. Right, so they're all going to have a one in six chance of surviving, I think. Well, let's click them all. Actually, no, so... no, there you go. So, so that had a one in three, and that you know why? Because Domash conceded. Because Domash conceded. Because Domash conceded, right? So, light horse is a one, men at arms is one to three. Also survived. That didn't survive. Didn't survive. But two survived, which means Domash is not routed. Domash right. will retreat, but Domash is not routed, right? Yeah, Gavrilo. That's the one. Be, that's going to be a one on everything because Gavrilo was still, was, you know, wow. Yeah. Actually, no. But it's I did not. keep the. It, it is it. It's because you conceded, right? The conceding is what saved your ass here. If you had not conceded, yeah. then none of these rolls, right, would have. They all would have been ones. Yeah. Um. Still okay, not so, great. So now I um, I do one of them. I do one. Yeah. And it came back. And it came back. Uh, so it didn't losses. even even in terms of attrition. Determine the fate of your routed units determine the fate of your routed units i clicked on all of them what do you mean determine the fate of your routed units what am i what am i missing here uh for a uh, uh, go up it's the one to the right uh yaroslav Those oh are right, right? got it got it got it got it you're right okay dead 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 alive okay three three died <laughs> one man at arms unit died two militia died my knight came back Okay, right. and now we are. So I have no more actions. So I in command. Right, but and oh, and you must and you, be. Wait, oh, did, oh, you retreated back into the stronghold. They yep. both ret by default, yeah, because they had to retreat by back default. from where they came from. Where they came Correct. from was the stronghold, right? Yep. Oof, man, yep. that's brutal. It's tough. Right. I, I mean, it, it was sort of a tough gambit, you know. Right. I think I think it was worth a try. Yeah, and you're still gonna, you're still and... gonna make me. I'm I'm still gonna have to feed, right? So I feed here, and then Yaroslav is gonna feed from here. Feed all done. And it's my turn. And guess what? Guess who's up? Yaroslav's up. And Yaroslav is pretty weak, but I also can't do anything about that. So the question now for me is: I think actually Herman, now that you've weakened yourself so much. I think that Herman's yes. actually up to the task. Yeah. Which is a little bit ballsy, but I think it's that's... a question about how aggressive you want to be. So I think I want to be aggressive. I think I'm going to, yeah. you know, because I think what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start saying, you know what, Yaroslav has no business staying up here. Yaroslav is going to go south and ravage. Right. right? And start break away. Ravage. Yeah, because it's because Herman basically came away from that battle untouched. Right, like I don't, right. yeah, the, the, you didn't even lose the knights off that. So, so yeah, there was no, there was no attrition from there. So, so Herman's in in good shape. Right, I think that's my turn. Wait, let's see if I undo this again. Undo. Can I? 
could ravage up here too. I didn't even think about that. Um, how many actions does this guy have? Two, but plus one because of my horse. So I could forage, walk, ravage, right? I could, f no, is that? Yeah, that works. Forage, walk. Nope. Hindered with zero loot. Oh, because it's a waterway. Okay, so that doesn't right. matter. Now, in that case, just, whoop. Let's undo, undo, walk, forage, ravage. Doesn't really matter, right? Forage, ravage. Eh, fine. That's fine. End command, feed, end feed. Back to you. Yep. So pay lords. My next command up is Vladislav. Vladislav. Uh, so now we're also just to update. We're at two and a half to one and a half because of my additional ravaged marker just now. Right. So now the question becomes: With Vladislav, do I do I break south and actually try to engage with Rudolf? Is there a value in that? Rudolf's pretty well set. <laughs> Rudolf, I don't has, think Rudolf has two knights and two sergeants. Yes. Yeah, I don't see that ending well. Yeah, um, yeah I, I don't see that, that playing out well. Um, do I push further into Estonia and I go to Weirland and then try to siege against the garrison on Wessenburg? Oh, that's going to be... that. So So the thing I will point you to there is if you look at the at the reference sheet, you'll see right. that, a ca that... So everything that's like a capacity 2 on the Teutonic side is a castle... But it doesn't That's matter. They all have one to four walls. Yeah. Right? They only have one man at arms with uh with crossbows as the as the garrison, but the walls are one to four instead of one to three. Right. So not impossible. You could definitely try it. Be interesting because I've never seen anyone att make that attempt. I don't. I don't um, know that I feel game for that. <laughs> um, um, given uh, given how combat just uh, I resolved. I feel like you. I feel like you need there's you need some hail mary again. I don't know what your plan, what your command deck looks like, but I feel like you need a hail mary at this point, because you're like a point behind. Yeah. You're a victory point behind. Um, you had infinite infinity money, right? So Gudomash and Gravilla had more than enough food. Uh, sorry, food. You have infinity food, so that even that whole uh, Sally action just now wasn't like something that like moved their service marker down, right? Um. Right. So I mean, yeah, something. something oh, and another another different. thing. Your concession was important because if you hadn't conceded, you would have had to roll for service. Like mm. losing a battle unconceded means that you now have to roll for service, and a one and a two moves your service market by one to the left. A three and a mm. four moves it by two, and a four and a five moves it by three to the left. Oh, that right? would have been so. They would have probably, probably, they would have just straight up both nigh disbanded. Right. Yep. And even yeah. though even though they're relatively far right on the service, right, there would have been a chance that you would have just lost them all together. In which case, I would have received more victory points. Right. Yeah. Which is just for the, just to be clear for few for the future, we're probably never going to play this 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 first two round scenario again. It's right. only in the Pleskow scenario, quick start or not, where that is a rule. Normally, removing right. lords from the board is not a way to get victory points. Right. It's just for this scenario. It's just for that scenario. Yeah. So now down in Weirland, if I so if I do a, does a ravage get you a prevender, or does a ravage just get you the victory point? So a ravage gets you a prevender, and if it's not just a a region, but like a city, like for example, it Narwia. Right when you ravaged Narwia, you got a loot, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then you probably ate the loot. I had to discard guess, it right? or discard yeah. it, right? Because you got a loot. If you ravage a city like a city like Narwia, you get a prevender and a loot. If you ravage where you are right now, you're going to get a prevender. Prevender. Right. Right. So, but if we go ahead and we ravage, we get the we get the victory point. And you we have the prevender to pay off the move and fought. Um. Now you still, have, I, you still have two actions, right? I have one action left. Why? Um, wait, wait, wait. I, oh, because you walk. Oh, your first. Because I move. You move. First one right, was right. a move. Right, right, right. So you have one action left. 
Right. Um, now, I could move... I mean, really, like, moving down to, to Waiga to mount a, a siege against Orpot seems I, like a terrible really, idea. Really bad idea. Yeah, yeah, that seems bad all around. Um, the question is, okay, do I push to Wessenberg... I mean, I don't even really know what else I would do with well, Vladislav so other than is... hey, other than hold him back to potentially right. intercept Knud. Well, so here's the thing: right? I know that he has at most one more command coming, right? Because there's only three command cards per lord. You already used right. one this round. This was your second right. one, so I know that at most he has a third coming. Right. Um, which you're kind of hinting to me right now that he does, because <laughs> otherwise yeah. it wouldn't matter, right? Right, otherwise it wouldn't matter. So yeah. you could go to Waiga and start ravaging, and then you could actually, like, on your next activation, go to Dorpot and ravage, right? So that would give okay. you a full other victory point, whereas if you move to Weisenberg now, well, same thing, right? You could ravage, then on the beginning of your next turn, you could ravage there, move to Jerwin, and ravage there. So it, it almost, it's the question is whether you want to risk... Uh, an, an, uh, a visit from Knud and Abel or not. If right. you go south, it's very unlikely that those two are ever going to clash, right? Yeah. Well, and um, I'm I'm going to. I feel like it's likely that you have at least one activation of Knud and Abel because that's such yeah. an opportunity. Like, why wouldn't you? Right. Now the other thing Knud is, one? you could go to Weisenberg, although that would end your turn, right? And then that would you end. know what? It's not worth it because here's the thing: even if you sack. Weisenberg. Like, if you do a successful storm on it, which is questionable, um, yes. even if you do that, it's only one victory point. Right? One second. Right. I gotta sneeze. Ooh, I wish I could mute myself somehow. Oh, okay, I caught it. <laughs> so, <laughs> even if you ravage it, it's a victory point. The The south yeah. is, like, almost a guaranteed victory point. Right? Because you're gonna ravage Wygai and Dorpot. Right. Um... That's it's my, just that, yeah. that that victory point the, the it's that's basically I feel like that's conceding canoe novel uh, canoe novel to come up and do that. Yeah, like but it, it, so, so let's assume for a moment that I have canoe novel coming, which I do. I was gonna say I feel like it's a safe assumption. They're gonna probably yeah. just go to Neva, right? You're never yeah. gonna make it back to Neva. I'm never gonna make it back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you might. So as might well... as well push forward with what I got. Yeah. So if you. That's so fair. I think, keep again. Keep in mind, going to Weisenberg will end your turn because. Right. Well, you only have one action left anyway, right? But it would have. No matter what happens, it's going to end the turn. Yeah. yeah. So going to Weisenberg is going to end your turn, uh, and you will lay siege to it, right? And even like looking like I was like even toying with the possibility of okay if we go past Westberg like maybe if you have Canoe Novel but later in the plan like is it worth even trying to pick a fight with Canoe Novel and the answer is no because Canoe Novel are pretty well stocked too yeah but, so, but, but, you're the, but but you have you have archery with minus two right so you have crossbows with with Vladislav so I would yeah. be going in and getting a crossbow hit and two hits from your mounted units before I even get to do anything. And you now have three... No, sorry, you have men at arms. So it'd be one crossbow hit, and then... So I'd have to absorb three hits before anything happens, right? And if I if I can just sail to Neva and get a guaranteed victory point, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'll be honest, right? I don't see why having that altercation with you would be of any benefit to me. Right. 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 It, it would be a question of if I push that altercation, like if I initiate... A field battle like if for whatever reason canoe novel are later in the plan and i actually then that of course presumes that the vladislav command is early enough in right. the game and and i don't know i like we we've talked about it enough i i think we can do we can go ahead and do um i guess it was for for waiga and Dorpot to to ravage off that um i think i think what i think both Choices are equally good, I'll be honest. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. So that'll end the command. I will feed him with the Preventer that I got off the Ravage. I will end feed. I may pay my lords. Um, not really worth going there. Okay, um, and my next person is Rudolph. And Rudolph can again do all this wild stuff, right? Yep. Where I think I'm going to go... I have three actions. I'm going to go north. And then I think I'm just going to Ravage Ravage. I'm going to... Yep. Oh, wait. I can't use the... Oh, because they're both... Wait, what? 
this ward once per command card may ravage locale adjacent by trackway. Oh, right. So I can ravage. I'm going to ravage here. And I can ravage yep. again. <laughs> right yep. where I am, right? Yep. That's what that's what's going to happen. Yep. And now I have no more actions. So I'm going to end command. I'm going to feed him with the loot. And I'm going to end feed. And that's it. All right. So I end pay. And then I have Gavrilo. Gavrilo. Hey, Gavrilo. Are you going to Sally again? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Um... I mean, yeah, it's it's iffy, right? It's right. iffy. I I'm I'm feeling very iffy about it. Yeah, you kind but of because like, if you sally, then then you're basically inviting me to to storm your your empty stronghold. But right. I still might not do it because you you'd be surprised. Herman may not be strong enough to get through. Uh, your your not with one siege engine. I'd probably have to spend right. an entire turn building up the Take siege, and I only have two more actions, right? I already told you that Knud and Lobel is coming, so that you know you know that Herman yeah. is at most is going to activate once more, and then the once. game and then the game is going to end, right? So right. we're pretty we're 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 coming in on the end now, right? Like we're, we're almost coming in on the yeah we're coming yeah. in on the end, which means I'll, that the second the second learning Nevsky video is going to be a fraction of the length of the first, <laughs> which is fine. Well, we were building up to the big battle, yeah. and then there was a, a big cloud of of dust and smoke, yeah. and, and I'm going to say that big battle, battle was way more interesting than I expected it to be. Um, because of yeah, the fact that I you mean, sallied, I thought that was actually pretty interesting. Yeah, I, well, well I, it, maybe maybe not maybe not smart, but interesting. It, it um, is interesting, <laughs> right? Well, what were you gonna do if you would have just stayed I don't know in there? Like, I think yeah. I still think that was your better bet, right? You didn't lose victory points. Could have gone well. You could have won. There's a, oh, right. it was it was low likelihood, but it would have been glorious. Um, yeah. And you didn't lose victory points, and now you're still in there, and you're like, eh. Right. What are you going to do? I think, I think it was worth trying, seeing, giving the dice a chance. Yeah, right? I, think, like, I think it was I think, worth. I think it was worth trying. I fully agree. Right. I mean, the the five hits that I took from on Gavrilo, yeah. like at the, at the very top. That, I mean, that from Herman, that was brutal. Yeah, like, but you but you absorbed three of them. You absorbed three of them, yeah. and you retreated right on time. Right on time. Right. Yeah. Right on time. Yeah. It, it's a tough thing. I, I, I don't know, like, if we rewind the game and figure out, okay, like, if we were moving to Pshkov, like, thinking in retrospect what the other options would have been, like, I don't, like, I guess that's why, of course, that's why you play the scenario out. Like, you right. could play the scenario out in different ways. And, I and, think it would be cool, not that they should do it, right, but I think it would be cool if probably the troops allowed you to, like, because you can review the whole game, right? It stores right. on the server, on server side, stores the entire game. You can, like, replay the entire game. Um, right. It would be cool if it allowed you to jump in at any point. Right. Like, oh, let's play like, it from here. Let, let's play it from here and fork off. Right. right? Fork, yeah. a, fork a different version of this. Yeah. That would, that would, I mean, that would I'm be sure that would nice. be. Well, it's because that like, would be that, that's like basically every chess program, right? Like you can do that in any chess program. Yeah. Right? Build walls. So, Ooh, okay. Yeah. All stone Kremlin. I don't really see. Um, Gabrilo doesn't have much to sally with, um, and right. I don't see any reason to pass. So let's stone Kremlin. Let's do it right. and command. That uh, makes sense. Um, in pay. And then okay, and now it's Herman, right? And I think what Herman's going to do because, like, I mean, Her what so Herman could. <sighs> I can I, I think I could maybe even ravage, move, ravage. <laughs> that seems wild. But I think <laughs> that's what I can do, right? I think that's what you can do. There's no point of me staying here, right? I ravage, I move here, which requires that I discard a ton, but I don't care because what what would I need it for? Right, and then I march, and then here I ravage. Wait, forge supply. I can't ravage. Oh, because when I leave, you your dudes come out, and now oh. I have an unbesieged adjacent lord. So I have to undo that because that doesn't make. Let me undo the whole turn. Yeah. So they automatically That's leave right. the stronghold. And you lost the legate too in that. Right, because I left him behind. Him. Like, I, I, yeah, obviously, I, I needed to click on him and then move with him, right? But right. that's not what's going to happen. That's not what's going to happen. I think I'm just going to hang out, right? Because I don't want you to come out of there with what with right. your last turn or whatever. Well, I know your last turn is going to be, is I, I know that your last turn is not those dudes, right? It's definitely not. It's for sure. Well, wait, you still have two more turns. I have two more turns. You have two more turns. 
So, okay, so in that case, I'm going to probably forage and ravage. Yeah, and you know, and, and I mean, you can you can deduce that, like, at least one of those dudes will have a turn, right? Because right. Vladislav, only even if, one more. if yeah, I yeah. had him later, it only has one more, so. And I'm not going to storm. I, I mean, I don't need the victory point. If I needed the victory no. point to win, that said, well, we're at three and a half to two. You're not winning this, right? I don't think, no, I think this You're is, not I think this, this is so, over once the uh, Sally. So I'm going to, I'm going to probably just for it i mean i could this is the last activation so doing so sieging makes no sense right so forage right. forage ravage right forage forage yeah. ravage that's basically yep. it right and now and we're at four to two in. right in command and yep. that's it right yeah and then in pay and then i have Dimash for my um for my next one right and and yeah like either sally or pass i don't have anything i don't uh, like I, like in terms of the hail mary here, I guess is it even worth attempting to sally? So with the Domash? walls, the walls won't help you, right? So the plus yeah, the one walls, walls won't doesn't help, help you. And the no. que the question you need to ask yourself is, what what for? Like the only reason you would do that is to route Herman so that you get victory right. points from having routed Herman. Um, and I, I I I just don't think that's. I mean, we could. You could try I, I think it. it's mathematically improbable. Uh, not impossible. It's not impossible because say... you would be flanking him. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you could try. I mean, why not, right? The question is why not, right? But we're already, like, it. <laughs> you may not be able. To you'd have to come out and insta concede if you wouldn't want your dudes to, to accidentally rally and give me victory points, right? So you'd only get one yeah. round. Of, you'd only get one round of combat. And I think Avilo and Domash together are not going to generate enough hits to, r no. to route Herman. So I think it's a I lost don't... cause, right? It's I a lost cause. It's would a lost it be fun cause. to play out? It would be fun to play out, but I think it's a lost cause. So I think like, I, don't I think, think it's a lost cause either way. I don't think you should do to it. Be honest, right? I think it's just a yo. Let's do some more goofy stuff. Like, but I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think you can win that one. Is what is I, well, I, I think I, the question, it's like, okay, like, I don't think I, we're pretty much at the point where there's no way that I'm going to win this because even with my last turn, like, I'm not going to make up a two. No, I think, out. I think you lost the second you put both in the stronghold. Probably. Right. Probably. But also, so, also I'm guessing here. I don't know. What do I know? Well, so I, I guess, do you want to play out the battle just for the sake of curiosity? Sure. Let's do okay. it. Let's so let's, do it. let's do it. Well, Sally. You have to... We'll position the attacking lords. We'll bring out Gavrilo. Um, we'll put him on the right this time. Yeah, and so for it's, me, you know, because that'll make a big difference. It doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Because you only have one dude here, right? So now you have to. Yeah, so then... I, I, if I were you, I'd probably concede. On like to or or not, right? It's up to you. Like if you don't concede, and then anyone gets routed now, those are extra victory points for me. So maybe don't concede. Maybe just like I was okay. going to say, I don't want to concede. I we're yeah. we're doing this. Yeah, it's, okay. we're, we're doing go, this. Whole okay, way. go in, go in, go in. But the, 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 this is going to be this is going to be a total disaster. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lean into so it. So you're gonna take a crossbow hit. Okay. Let's assign that to the. Um, so those are both the one minute three. arms. Yeah, minute arms at Gabrilo, and of course. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, you could. Okay. So you could take that with either of your lords. Interesting. I could take that with either of lords. Okay, yeah. so now you have to give me your. Now I get all your bows and arrows and okay a crossbow yeah. hit. I think that's gonna get straight up go to the to the to that dude. Now you have defending horse. I have defending horse strike. So there's your five. There's your five hits. <laughs> your, Herm, Herman's like <laughs> crashing in with the. So just another thing I never mentioned by the way is like you have to think about these as like a hundred horses, right? I think so. It's yes. not, it's like each of these yes. wedges is like a hundred horses or something. Right, like right. That. We're at a high enough level yeah. here. It's not like these are individual units. No, no, like no. it is a, yeah, a it's full like, company. It's like a whole this company. is a full cavalry. Yeah, yeah. 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 So So there's like a big wall of like now there's like a they're plowing through and previously there was a big wall of crossbows like coming over, right? In the in the way like uh um, what's that series called? Like the last one that they did was Three Kingdoms, and it was about China. Total War. Um, Total War. The Total War series has that, like yeah. in in like on a on a much more detailed scale. Um, okay, what happened? So I tanked four of the five. Wow. Uh, I did wow. tank four of the five with the and so then lost the men at arms. Okay, one, so I'm gonna so take, I'm to... gonna have to eat three. I'm gonna have to when you click on this now. I'm gonna eat three attacks, right? Two hits, two hits. The siege work. The siege work. Oh, the siege blocked one. one. 
Oh boy. Yep. Okay. Well, guess what? One, two. <laughs> Got them both. Okay. And now I do get do a foot strike, which is going to be two hits. Okay. No. So for the. Oh yeah. The, so the attacking horse it did include the Gavrilo one, even though I clicked on Domash. Okay. Did, so yeah. then. Yeah. Um, you also no longer have that bridge card, right? That was definitely. I like no a, longer that, that definitely gave you a bunch of like extra damage. Yeah. Well, uh, Gavrilo. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Cool. And oh Doma boy. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right. Well. Oh um, wow. The state of my routed units. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good. Looking great. Done. Done. Oh, Domash is just dead. Domash is dead. Gavrilo somehow didn't lose. Uh, a thing but so then now you have to Lord, remove Lord, Lord, Lord. you have to remove Dev so now you see interestingly now so Dimash was removed right like yeah, entirely just outright removed yep yeah. and then two towns for your losses which were negligible oh yeah I'm actually I want to see Dimash sorry Dimash, Russian losses Dimash and Dimash didn't even come back to the board no like his marker didn't even come back right probably because he no, just he's, lost he... all units uh, he's he's sitting dead in the mud somewhere. He's yeah. he's done. Wow, rough, so rough. So yeah, you Sometimes. can. So if this happens in a, in a sixteen round campaign, that dude's never yeah. coming back, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, this is a different calculus. If we're playing sixteen, then I'm I'm not going to feel so bold as to to sally out I think, in that I way. I think there's going to be situations in the sixteen round campaign where someone just hits concede and it's like, you know what, this is a, in, in like round mm -hmm. eleven, and it's like. Oh yeah, I got one lord. You got six. This game's over. You got six. Right? Yeah, there's there's no coming back off. Like that, we can play so. this out, but also this is pointless. Let's just start a new game, right? It's like playing mm -hmm. a long game of chess where you're like, no, we're done, we're done. Let's just right. start a new game. Right. We can see where this is going to go. Right. We, okay. I, I know so, the end of this. Yeah, Herman lost. Okay, divide three carts and two boats. Well, they're all you get going spoils. To the same dude. And spoils. Okay, man, look at Herman four. Four provender, a loot, Dom four carts, five carts, seven carts, two boats. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah. Domash has no more actions because he's dead in the mud somewhere. What's in command? You must feed lords who moved or fought. Well, the great news is that I don't have to feed Domash because he's dead, and I have plenty of food for Gavrilo. So yeah. that's just. Yeah. Yeah. And then pay the lords now. So. Okay. And Gavrilo just, yeah. Okay. Right. Gavrilo's just went went straight back into the, you know, straight back just in. Just went straight back in. Yep. Okay, so now I'm doing Knut and Novel. I'm There's pretty sure the Knut and Novel are just straight up going to sail. Just sail the uh, Neva? Why not? Just sail because I can move everything I have and anything else I do will not allow me to sail. It doesn't matter where I go because you're not coming back to anything, but I'm just going to go to Neva, right? Which gives yep. me a victory point and I have no more actions and command uh, feed. And that's it. That's also the end of the game for me, right? Yep. And then for Vladislav, like you're gonna Ravage. get a, yeah, Ravage, move, Ravage. So you're gonna at least go to three to three victory points, right? So it's gonna um, so it's gonna end six to three. That's, that's well, actually, I don't even get the opportunity to. Oh, it's not giving me the option to Ravage. This is what, yeah, because 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 going into there ends your turn. This is why. See, we're not. We didn't think this through. You need to go to Weisenberg and then Ravage, move Ravage over Ravage there. Because here, yeah. yeah, I yeah, I miss. I said they're equally good. They're not. Right? They're not you equally can't good. Can't actually yeah. Ravage there because it's going to end your turn. It's going to end the turn. Which means well, it, it should have ended six to three and not six I'm to three and gonna, a half. But like, okay, like, yeah. Does it does it really matter? Doesn't, um, doesn't. So, no. We'll we'll end command. We'll we'll feed the lords. He That's gets the preventer off the ravage. That's All done. End the pay. GG. GG. Yep. So two and one with six VP to two and a half, which again I think right. should just be six to three for sure. Um, right. So guess... turtling up in that first turn, pretty much dictated what was going to happen like i like having gorillo like sit with like five prevender and like everybody else around him dead doesn't really seem like that was an optimal no it's like if i if i can use a marvel snap or a, or a, like when we talk about snap sometimes they call it uh like gerrymandering the game right you're trying to get someone yeah. else to overcommit in an area yeah um so that you have fair game on the others and that you overcommitted in there I way overcommitted, yep. and that probably was like you. You probably just at that point need to admit that historically, Isborsk and Pskov fell, 
right? They, they felt. And you need and, to figure out to how to navigate around, around that, right? And again, I will show you, I will gladly show you what the, like I'm gonna go home and I'll go to, so we ended that, but I'm gonna show you. So here's how, I mean, again, Tutans did one here, went here with five and a half to four and a half. Right. Um, because they ravaged all over the place, right? And and I yep. just, I had like one person running, I had like Domash running around down here in the south uh, yep. in Livonia trying to like get some victory points. Um, yep. And that gave me one and a half. And that was with this, it was, yeah. And the only reason I even got to to four and a half was because I got rid of two two lords, two, right? right. Um, in other, in battles that were much more favorable for me than your Sally action. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it, like sallying with both, or, or well, this, for one, the sallying was like disastrous all around, right? Like if I like I probably could have kept one and just turtled up. Like if I did Gavrilo, Stone Kremlin, and just hung out the full way and tried to and freed up a unit, freed up freed up Dimash to do something else. Like you said, once both went in, I was effectively overcommitted right. because then you could push to siege, you could break off, and you could get the additional victory points. Um, and I wasn't, you know, like the Sally was sort of a disadvantage, like it was not an advantageous push to begin with. So, so yeah, like that's, and, and I think it's instructive in going through the game like this, that we were able to see like, okay, the different, like going through the Sally action, going through the different combat resolutions, even with the, the totally disastrous one at the end, which we knew was going to end the way that it was like, it was sort of fun to, to play it out. Um, and I think for me, like playing playing this game for the first time, like I have a better handle on the combat now, um, to to be able to assess, you know, what sort of confrontations to to push or or not push, right. in, in subsequent games. So, yeah, no, I think but, you're right. By the way, I'm just I'm, this is auto running now from where we played off today, right? Uh, yeah. Is, I don't know if you're looking at the stream right now, but I am. Yeah, I'm looking what's at it. What's happening? It's just like. I'm just letting it run because I'm actually looking for a point where I can that I can use for as a good title card <laughs> the second right. video. And I think yeah, it's once like you get to the one where all three are in Peshkov. I think everything like, needs to be through. everything needs to be in, in Peshkov, right? And that's going to be the one, right? Because the, That'll be the, the end state just gives away the final, like gives away what where the game is going to be. I think it's yeah. happening right now. I think this is the part where oh, no, yeah, you're supplying, supplying. We figure out the supplying, right there. And then stop. The right, that's the point right there. Boop, right yep. and that also ends right and then you get to choose whether you're going to avoid battle but you're not going to right that's the right. part where you're gonna withdraw boop boop there we go there's the two withdrawals right and and, and and like you said this is where like if you go to the background book and you look at the timing of how like when Prashkov fell and and sort of the the timing of that like i mean i think that is the appeal behind these war games these historical like war games that that have the sort of attention to detail on on simulating the historical uh, context of it like like you do get to play out okay well you know armchair quarterback well why did they let Prashkov fall well, it's like if you try to if you try to overcommit, like we just played it out, right. you know, trying to trying to turtle up in Prashkov doesn't really make sense. There's too much the the, the three units down right. below for, for Teutons. It's just too much of an advantage. Well, or the turtle yeah. needs to be with just one. Uh, it just needs to be with just one. Just one. Yeah. Right. And not maybe not even your strongest. Right. Yes. Because right? the right. strongest needs to kind of run interference <laughs> sort of. Right. Yeah. To be like. To, to but you know I the I think I think in this scenario the Russians are disadvantaged right I'm pretty sure even with their starting the victory point two, the three for two is tough because I mean you're you're basically looking at asymmetric warfare almost anywhere you go right like yeah I think it's 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 a tough road you have to be really creative about I probably needed to be more creative with the preparations, like I said, like Gavrilo ending with five Prevender at the end of the game while everything is smoking in ruins around him isn't exactly optimal, right? right? Is there Are there things that I could have done there either in prep, in, in Levy? You know, I, that's the other thing, too. In Levy, like, I deliberately didn't go double the cost for Prevender. Um, and in retrospect, it's like, given what I had committed to, I actually might as well have done that. I might as well have loaded up on all the enemy, on all of the units that I had, 
Um, and then if I lost down, you know, and ended up having to play games with the Defender, so be it. Right. Right. Like yeah. I had already committed to turtling. I really needed to go the full way with the levy actions to make that up. But right. I mean, I think the fact that even all these different strategic considerations, I mean, I think that's what makes this a rich game. Like this, yeah. this is a really fascinating game to play through. There's a lot going um, on, right? It's pretty, it's, I think, think, I think it's, I don't even know what the BGG weight is. It's probably like 4.1 or 3.95 or something. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's like on the order of like a heavy Euro, right? That's, usually because it's like it is very i find it very playable but we're also playing it on rally the troops i mean right? the weight is 3.95 um on yeah. bgg ski i think that's um, i think that's very optimistic i think this is a little bit i'd feel like this is more of like 4.3 4. or 4.2 there's a because there's a lot going on right i mean it, it helped yeah i think the rally the troops implementation of it oh yeah may this have is, like helps immensely being I think able I may to have never touch this combat. otherwise right right like yeah especially like figuring out the combat rules and the placement like and looking at the diagrams and the rules like i think that was that would have been an incredibly difficult lift so i mean it's certainly a credit to rally the troops like this is exactly you know there are people that are going to play nevsky and actually understand what's going on right you know far more in, in getting exposure to the game than i think just trying to pick up the rules and and read it in the abstract assuming you even get it to the table with somebody that would play it with you you know it's I a think beautiful that's... i mean i so i immediately after starting to play it i was so in love with the idea that i was like oh i'll just i'll see if someone has it for trade on bgg and lo and behold i found someone who not only had nevsky for trade but also inferno which is the mm. third game in the series and i think what i gave them for it was uh Kalis, um pillars of the earth and Among the Stars, which I had kickstarted back in the day and got all the bonus stuff for. And it cost me probably like a hundred bucks, but I had never played it. It was literally still in shrink. In fact, all of them were in, were basically open, but not punched out. Mm, okay. And so, yeah. I was, so, th so that so that person was like, oh yeah, really? If you, like, if you throw in Among the Stars, I'm like, well, you're in luck. It also comes with all the metal coins and whatnot. Right. Um, I sent it all and got two amazing games right and i and the board the, so the board is relatively small it's not yeah. huge it looks like it might be a gigantic board but it's not actually that large but it's really i mean you can see even from the colors here right it looks really good on a table i was gonna say it right? i mean it, it's not i mean nothing to me compares to the 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 map of pax premier like just in terms of the components there right. but like even looking at the bgg picks like the colors are really nice um, the, the tokens that you have for the individual lords are, are really distinctive. So these mats you know, like, are huge, right? These mats are like this big, right? The player map? The, player, the, the, lord, the, map? the lord mats, yes. right? They're yes. big. I yeah, mean, they, all yeah, these pieces, they, all these pieces on the lord map, uh, yeah. like the, the, are wooden pieces. You can yeah. use tokens for them that have a little bit more, like actually like descriptive what thing does on them for people who want that. But once you know what they do, or you're looking at the reference sheet, you just use the wooden pieces, right? Right. Um, but the season track at the top is is in itself probably yeah. half the size of the overall world, the the encounter map down below. Uh, it's like um, it's like a, it's I think it's like so it's the map folds into three, so the bottom mm -hmm. part is two thirds and the top part is one third. Is one third. Right. Yeah. So. And it's not it's not big. It's really not big. It's like yeah, same, it's it's a pretty small profile. It's a pretty small profile compared, but, to but then you also have like all the Lord mats, right? So it's like yes, it still takes up quite a bit of real estate. But like it's it looks good on a table. Right. I opened it up and I was like, mm, yeah, yeah. And last night, no, I love the color on the map. The friend that if my my friend I went out with to that show that I mentioned earlier, um, he uh, I kind of got him into the idea of playing this. He's like, I like board nice. games. I'm like, well, this is like I'm war like warning. This is like a but to be clear, this guy's like an engineer at Disney Plus, right? So he's it's not okay. like he's unfamiliar with complexity. So uh, <laughs> so he's like, oh yeah, I'll try that sometime. I'm like, awesome. Like I have a friend around the corner who's like willing to engage in these like very long board games, two player board games with me. Um, we both have two yeah. young children, so probably wishful thinking, but uh, <laughs> we shall see. But no, but this is a playing I, an async on rally the troops gives you more opportunities than that, even if you don't get the chance to play it at the table. Though, it right? does, so and I'm right now. So let me jump over to something else here. I am playing games two. 
Uh, there's, oh man, I don't know if you want to see the game I'm playing with Brian. It's not looking good for Brian. <laughs> it's not. Sorry, right Brian. now, right now it's because, but, well, we're also trying a bunch of experiments, right? But it's like five to one. And he has, mm. he has, he literally has Herman Lift. Right. He, he was just talking earlier in the chat on stream about how he discarded the second Lord. So he's down to one. So yeah, that's. So yeah, it's not looking. Welcome good. back, Ryan. There we go. <laughs> I just, I just, I just would join. <laughs> You summoned him back to the stream. This is you, funny. You, you invoke that. That's that's so Brian. Timing. We just ended our game, and that ended like so. Right, six and a half, six to two and a half. Uh, yeah, with like a, that's the end state. But then like our current right. state is just hilarious, right? It's like wh whoops. <laughs> yeah. And Herman's like sieging Shkov, right? So it's kind of cool. It's like, oh yeah, I'm doing that, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Take it. Knock yourself out. Yeah, right. go for it. Um, yeah, and in, in contrast to the to the overcommit on Pushkov in our game, like looking at this, it's just like yeah, whatever, sure. So, but I have a friend who I'm playing the full thing with, right? And I think right now he just texted me and said, <laughs> "LOL, you can curse in this." He's saying this because you know you can't do that on BGA, right? Right. Um, text me when you're. That's right. I can't funny. Push no, what's no idea what's happening. So defending archery, yeah, he he's never been in a fight, so we just start into a oh, fight. Oh yeah. So I think yep. he, yeah. So he needs to click on this. Is it is a confusing, right? He needs to click on this wall, not on yes. the, yeah. I'm gonna, not on, uh, yeah. When you're just going on the the garrison, yeah, you have to click on the wall. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. text him. I think you need to click. Ugh. Kind of, yeah. Brian mentions in chat that there are a lot of what graphics do I push moments in this implementation, and I agree. Like I remember. Like during the levy part, or like we were trying to figure out, there was something in that first stream where I, I figured out that I had to click on the coat of arms. And it's like, I would never have sort of intuited yeah, that unless I just happened to hover over it. No, no, no. It has a couple. It has, it, there are definitely a few, like, where am I supposed to click right now? It's also right. mostly because it's just not the highlighting around the thing you're supposed to click is always, sometimes it's white on white. Yeah. And you can't really see it all that well. It's you actually really my friend Jesse, who I'm playing this 16 round game with. He constantly points out, he's like, well, "How was I supposed to see that?" And I'm like, "It is a really, it's really tiny, right?" The same with the yeah. highlights around the discs when you want to like take them along with the marshal. It goes right. from like a thin white line to a thin yellow line. Yeah, right? and it's very hard to see, right? So I there, think there, yeah, there's different, there's some different things that could potentially yeah. be tuned there, but yeah, there's some usability yeah, issues. Like, but you can fix. Those are all fixable. Those are all fixable. I think I think they're all quirks that you can either either work around or they're easily fixable. And then yeah. also, this is not Basil, right? No. Like, no. I, I'm still gonna take this um, eleven times over ten over Basil. Yeah. Sorry, Basil people, but um, oh, they're in the the GMT newsletter, which is this is published by GMT. The GMT newsletter from February actually had uh, they do this monthly newsletter that's like takes like five hours to read. It's like a giant newsletter, but where, right. somewhere in there. It said something like, oh, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Volko Runke is working directly with Tor Rasmussen, right? Um, hmm. To like bring Nevsky to rally the troops. Everyone's super excited, blah, 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 right? So they were actively involved in bringing it to rally the troops. I think that's yeah. so, I always think that's so smart, right? Like I, it made me yeah. buy the physical game, right? So it's like, like oh, I yeah, said, I don't. Like and, and I don't think I would have went that step, right? Like if I if I was just looking at Nevsky in the abstract and just I would have been like, oh, that map looks good, the components look good, but man, I don't know that I'm ever gonna be in a situation where I wouldn't necessarily have done it. But now having played it, I'm like, okay, is there a way? Right. You know, is there a way for me to have got to get this to table? Is it worth having just even you know, just even to have? Like, it right. gets exposure to the game. You know, sometimes we joke about like, okay, doing things for exposure, like from a like a personal work perspective. Right. But I think sometimes for for games like this, like getting a broader audience is really like such a huge part of the battle. Well, I mean, uh, not that Fred Serval is ever going to watch this nonsense video, but like, it's all his work. That's, for me, that's all he's doing, right? I blame yes. Fred. I blame right. Fred. One hundred percent. I blame Fred, right? Because it's like his whole like teach with uh the designer and lord of the board and i'm like oh i'll watch that right and i start watching i'm like huh this looks pretty interesting and then he's right. like in that video he's like well if you really want to learn it you should probably watch um 
Jean-Michel Crozier's videos, right? And because mm-hmm. um, those are like the actual, like all the details, all the everything. Um, the and I was like, I'll watch that. And I watched that and like, yeah, and now I'm ready, right? Now I can like play it against myself twice. So I played the quick start twice with just right. selecting myself as both as, as both yep. elements. And then I had yep. it open in two browser tabs. <laughs> um, yep. And I was going back and forth. And, you know, I was like, oh, interesting. That's how this works. That's how this works. And after doing it twice, I was like, okay, I think I can teach this now. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. an effective way to ease out the mechanics. Uh, um, so it's a huge, it's similar to John Company, right? It was a huge, probably like 10 to 20 hour time investment up front, right? Which is just, you know... I used to host a board game night when I still lived in New York. I did it every week, and we always played a new game. And then some of us would have looked at the rules, and most of us didn't, and including myself, right? And then we'd spend like the first two hours just punching it out and reading the rules. And you know, on a week, and it's a week night, and sometimes we'd, we'd go to one a.m. and people were like, "Oh God, I gotta get up tomorrow morning." And so I learned my lesson the hard way, right? Like now I understand. Okay, if I any ever want to involve anyone in like playing any form of game that has an, reasonable amount of complexity that's like not just cascadia or something which is a great game but also a thing you can learn by just reading the rules and then playing it or even azul right you can just play a game like that badly but you'll play it right um but this one you can't just be like casually like whoa what's this right yeah it's gonna be a miserable experience for everyone involved and people like be like well i'm never gonna do that again like when I just started playing board games again in like probably like around 2010, a friend of mine in New York invited me over to his place to play Dune. And I was like, what's Dune? And he's like, I don't really know. It sounds interesting. It's asymmetric. And I'm, and then we spent like three hours trying to figure out how what that game did, right? And then someone won. There's a way in Dune to win on turn three if you guess some other part of the game. And that happened. <laughs> so the, at least the game ended... T- in a timely manner and then afterward after six hours i was like well i'm never doing that again and then for the next three days i couldn't stop thinking about it but but it was like but i, but I also never played I, i'd never played dune again right and i really want to play that again because i got the new updated version which doesn't look as nice as the original but whatever um but it requires right. six players right you need six dedicated people and i would never do what we did again if i was like okay i have six people who want to play dune I'm probably going to be the person who now treats this like a research project and studies everything in and out so that the first experience doesn't turn into a nightmare. Right. Um, Yeah. And so now I'm in a place where, again, I'm playing this with my friend. We're playing the 16 round campaign. Uh, He just, it's funny. He just texted me back. I wrote to him, I think you need to click on the wall. And he's like, LOL, there it is. This UI, man. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Literally just started clicking on all things on the page. Thought for sure I'd already clicked that one. And I had that experience too playing it the first time against myself. Yes. I was like, what am I yeah. clicking here? Where is yeah, I the... was very thankful that you told me to click on the wall because I never would have discerned that ever right. it's when just like... we had that very first garrison fight. Right. So he's yeah. now, he's attacking, I think, yeah, he's playing Herman and he, is, he just ravaged uh, Isborsk and now he's, oh wait, that's this is me. What am I talking about? I'm the, I'm the, I'm the Tudens. <laughs> Right, so I'm ravaging Isborg, archery strike, one crossbow hit. Hmm, where do I take it? Oh wait, no, attack! Oh no, poor dude! It, it went into the, it went straight into the one siege works. Whoops! Oh no! So now my archery is going to strike him, right? And so now you think you think I can click anywhere here? No, you you have to click on the coat of arms. And you know this because there's a little white halo around it, but you wouldn't know yeah. unless you look at another one that doesn't have the white halo, right? right. So, so that part is a little interesting... bit, yeah. Sorry, I was gonna say, Brocreate with an interesting question in chat. Are there any video games that are as demanding upfront as these kind of board games? And I think Brian immediately jumped to what Paradox, I was thinking in yeah. terms of contemporary games. Like, yeah, like if you look at Paradox games, they have that same classic, like, oh, you want to play Europa Universalis 4, or oh, you want to play Crusader Kings 3, um, or oh, you want to play Victoria 2 or 3, right? Like, if we go all the way on the end of complexity for for the Paradox games, basically the people in the community there will will invite you to watch a, a video series. Right. Um, very similar to what we've been talking about here with, like, Homo Ludens or Drama Shoko Show, or even what we're putting together here oh. with the, the videos of Learning Nevsky. I'll too, be honest, so. I think the Paradox games are 
even like much more compl complex than this so. i th well the thing for me with the paradox games like at least with this so okay there's there's information in sort of sorting out the ui and the particular rally the troops information yeah. i think there's there's still a manageable number there's a manageable amount of information up front to take in like to hold in player ram or like the amount of player memory that i have looking at this when i look at a paradox game and i see numbers upon numbers upon charts upon trend lines upon anything else like i, I think of the times that i tried to play victoria 2 um and that was sort of nightmarish <laughs> um like it's i want to play victoria 2 today like but it is it is such a huge lift up front to even know how much of this is signal or noise and that's totally contextual yeah. where you are in the game. In Crusader right? Kings like, three, I cannot keep track of the of the uh, the, the the lineage, right? Which is yeah. super important because you need to know. That's if kind of a gonna, critical part of the like game. If your dude dies, you're gonna lose parts of your kingdom because of you not having full like honor, owner, not using the terms right, right? Like you, I right. feel like you have to be like a studied historian to like yeah. be able to follow what's going on in Crusader Kings. I'm fascinated by it right but like I've, yeah and i play it bad poor very poorly like i played the intro scenario a couple of times and i almost got to becoming the king of ireland i died right before i became the king of ireland i was very close to being able to establish the kingdom and then i died and i lost half of ireland <laughs> right and i'm like am i gonna fight back for this now i'm like oh i guess i could mm -hmm. right and it's th that game is interesting that way um, yeah by the but way I mean, we missed definitely... a lot of chat here i just like realized where he's like where yeah brian's like war games were on life support for me before rally the troops which i agree yeah. i can kind of agree with i yeah. never i mean if you I don't yeah. have that local if you don't have that local community and i think that's that's the thing like I, I actually feel somewhat blessed in st louis like we have a st louis historical war game society if i really wanted to to take that jump like i could go to miniature market on manchester and i can meet up with some of the people there like right. i think even mitchell land who has developed some board games he's like a local designer in the st louis area like stonemeyer games has some st louis stuff there's actually a little bit of a community in st louis to support this but that is a, an extremely rare situation right if i go back if i think back to where i grew up in like southeast kansas like i probably couldn't find anybody to even play settlers of Catan with me if i wanted wow. to right like it's i mean there's just a totally different thing i think it's better now in the internet era where you can do more arrangement of this stuff you have tabletop simulator you have vassal you have rally the troops especially but i think like those are those carry so much more weight in establishing what a war game community can be versus what it used to be in the past um and and just even have like what your options are locally can be so limited um so so yeah i totally i totally agree like there are things that i've tried out on you know the, the games that we tried out on rally the troops I don't know that I would have tried out myself, um, but I've like I've enjoyed all of them. You know, even Shores of Tripoli, which we we gripe about, um, justifiably so. I like, like I, I still like had it all fun right. playing it. Yeah, I definitely yeah, like it's it all fun. right. I I kind of feel honestly, I kind of feel that game probably loses a lot in translation to the to the um, digital or not digital. Yeah. Always. I mean, I, now I'm misusing the term, and I always complain when people misuse the term. In translation to like the online platform, I think it loses. Right. I think being the board is pretty, the pieces are pretty. The cards are pretty. You yes. want to be, and you want to roll the dice, and it's a little bit exciting. You want to roll the dice, right? and there's so many dice to roll. So many dice. To roll. Um, <laughs> but that's part of the fun, right? Like, like, like we talked about before. It's just, it's like, yeah. There's, there's something about the the kinetic expression of that game that I, I would agree. Like, somewhat when it, when you see the math kind of coldly abstracted in between all those dice rolls, it doesn't quite have the same thrill of well, I, I, you know. Thomas Jefferson went into to the guns of Tripoli, and now we're each going to roll a dozen dice. Let's see right. what happens. You know, there's there's just something sort of inherently fun with um, that playing with them at the table. Yeah, Brian's saying a lot of uh, even hobby gamers simply will not try war games or historical games. And again, I think that I believe maybe it's not true, but I think that I think Fred's doing. I don't know how many. I'm always like this. I, I'm understand. I understand this is a niche within a niche, but like I do. Someone recently said this. Like I, I think it, I think it was. Um, Dan Thoreau from Space Biff said something like that war games are having a, like are having a moment, right? Historical games, war games are having yeah. a moment. And I kind yes. of feel that too, but I don't know if that's actually numerically true, but I'm enjoying it because people like Fred Serval are like doing some really good work on getting like cool people to talk about their exposure to this and how it's 
mm-hmm. how it's probably like, and he's like opening it up to all avenues, right? Enthusiasts, critics, like, and I'm like, wow, this is, this is interesting. And he's doing it. I, I don't know. I'm happy that someone's doing that work. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot of thematic diversity in the space now too. Like I think about Nevsky and like, okay, we're, we're doing this conflict or the shorts of Tripoli doing like the, the Barbary conflict and everything else. Like when I was growing up and like looking at different, you know, like war games of that type, like there was, there was so much that was centered around like World War II, like World War One, like there, there, there were different, you know, or maybe medieval stuff like simulated through tra- like chain mail, you know, which, right. which you know, gave birth to Dungeons and Dragons. Like I do think there's a, there's a, we've reached a point of maturity in design. And I think we've reached a, a point of maturity in terms of like the different themes yeah. that are getting rendered in these different games. Like it really feels like a lot of things are coming right. together. I, mean, I feel like that still has a, the good news there is I think that has a long way to go, right? There's and a it still lot, has a long way to go. A long way, yeah. like especially the theme part. Mechanics yeah. part is like so much better right like it's already mm-hmm. so much better like look at anything like coin or levian campaign and yeah. you know again praise to volko runki for birthing these systems so mechanically i think it's become so much stronger and now and and i like these themes but i totally get that there's a larger excitement and again here's why i will blame um uh, joe klein on our discord right i mm-hmm. meet, once he pointed me to cross cross bronx expressway which is like uh, one of those games in the Irregular Conflict series um, where it's about like, it's a conflict, but it's not war, right? It's about like influence. Who is influencing right. whom and how is this being played out with the population and how is this benefiting or harming the population of the Bronx, right? Yep. Um, he pointed, he's or like- Or votes for women that you talked about before on the previous Yeah, stream, exactly, right? right? It's not war in that sense, right? But it's like, there's a conflict of interest. Oh yeah, and I- just so that yeah, people should for sure listen to uh, um, oh, who had, who we interviewed. Oh, it was Dan Thoreau. So space, there's a Space Biff podcast, and Dan Thoreau interviews. Uh, I can't believe I'm blanking. I'm bad with names, right? I'm blanking on the designer's name. Uh, interviews the designer of Votes for Women, and that's a really, really interesting interview. Like, right. very interesting about like, oh yeah, I actually work in politics here's how politics works and here's the work you need to do right right and you need to understand stakeholders you just you need to like not empathize empathize but at least you need to understand why someone would be opposed to something as obvious now as women's rights for voting right yep like and she takes it apart in a way that is just so interesting and i had the game's still in shrink over on my desk because we didn't you know kids my wife's super interested. She's like, oh, I want to play this game. It also, like, aesthetically speaks to her. It's just so pretty. Like, it's so beautifully produced, which is another reason why I think that Shores of Tripoli, like, I, you probably need to play that on a table, right? Because the production quality of Fort Circle games, like, they've only put out two games at this point, but, like, they're yeah, it's, it's through the roof, right? It's just such, such so well produced. Um, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still there. So yeah, I was just like, listening. I was like, is he? <laughs> it got real quiet all of a How's sudden. He, yeah, How's sorry. He um, oh, you were typing Terra Invicta, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I was typing really quickly. I was gonna, I was just gonna say, right. I didn't know if it made sense to really mention Terra Invicta. Of course, Terra Invicta is another like par- paradox adjacent game. Like Star Dynasties is something. Right. That for people, for people that want Crusader Kings in a digital in a digital form, but not the Crusader Kings theming, like Star Dynasties has like a, a sci-fi bent on that too. Like there are definitely some other games that are in that space. But, but yeah, like, um, you know, I think it, board games are in a really interesting space right now. Um, I think it's cool that we have multiple avenues to play things like Navsky and other things to, to really interrogate the space and some of the different design decisions that are being made here. Um, and, and I think it, it is, there's, that's not to say that there aren't thing, interesting things happening in the digital space either. Um, I do think it's sort of interesting, like Liz Ryerson, you know, had the essay um, taking, you know, becoming the chair of the experimental games workshop, kind of talking through like the, the, the ongoing evolution of, of indie games and where like polish and, and different, you know, push and pulls against mechanics and, and mechanics driven design or, or like one, one cool mechanic based design. Like, I think there's still a lot of, we're still trying to find our footing sometimes it feels like 
in the digital design space. Um, and I think there's some interesting stuff that's coming out of that too. It's just interesting in a different way versus what we're seeing in the board game space. I think. Right. Oh, watch it play is going down the historical gaming hole too. Yeah, that's definitely helping, right? Um, yeah. Rodney, I forget Rodney's last name, but Rodney from Watch It Played went down like the coin rabbit hole like two years ago. Yeah. And I think is still going down that rabbit hole. By the way, this is my game with uh, with Brian. <laughs> oh, Zach Bard's putting out a card game? Really? I didn't know that. Wait, did you just mention that Liz Ryerson is... Uh, Liz Ryerson isn't the chair. Isn't, is I don't know about the chair. She yeah. She's overseeing the experimental games. Oh, um, the experimental like, games workshop? Yes. At GDC? Interesting. Yeah. I, GDC, I didn't know that yeah. either. Yeah, you know, Liz was I, Liz was definitely on the IGF jury, but Sean Pierre is the current IGF chairman. Um, right. And I think Sean Pierre is planning on staying the chairman for a while um, and is doing yeah. a great job. It's a really fantastic job. Like, it was a joy to work with when I was on the on the student and grand prize juries. Um, but anyway, so this is my game with, uh, I don't know if you're looking at the stream. This is my game with Brian, yeah. right, where Brian has like one lord left. And the current yeah. standing is five to one. And there's still a lot to go, right? There's still like a full, like, and of course, Brian's not like, oh, okay, he's going to do blast left twice. <laughs> so I don't think it matters at this point that I show my my hand. Because um, I'm like, okay, I don't even remember what I was doing here. Dumash, for some reason, is all the way down here. <laughs> like, how did that Brian happen? says it does not matter. <laughs> yeah, it does not matter. Like, I'm like, how is that? Why? why I don't even remember why Domash is all the way down here. Yeah. Because what am I doing yeah. here? Like, Domash is... <laughs> Gavrilo's over here running running rampant, right? Just, like, doing the weirdest stuff. Domash is down here. Vladislav is in Novgorod, right? And I'm like, okay, cool. What What's, what, what's the plan? Right, and the reason Vladislav is here is because, I think I mentioned this, I got a card that like basically pushed the Danes off the board. <laughs> They're not even Ooh. in here anymore. Hey Charles. Hey, Charles. Like the Danes, they because of the way the, the first turn is seated, they don't have any command. And then before the second round started, I had an event card that the Danish king died. Move Knut and Abel one to the left. And then oh, move geez. Knut and Abel. Knut and Abel were started on three, <laughs> so they moved to two. And then they instant disbanded because they had no money or no way to buy them up, right? Yeah. Um, so one thing that Brian is pointing out in chat is that, so Zach Barth is putting out a card game. Crossovers are happening. Like one of the designers that I think jumps to mind in that is Ed Beach, who was the designer of Civilization VI, but also has a number of board game designs that are out there. Like Here I Stand. Um, there's the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War for Adam Oh, that's Hill. the same person? That's the same person. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, like interesting to see the lineage and then going into something like Civilization, which is much more of like it's civilization is grand strategy but it's definitely much more approachable in that vein versus like a paradox um yeah. and i think ed beach you know there's some interesting decisions in in civ 6 2 versus some of the the other games in the the civ series but it is interesting yeah yeah ed beach is the he was the lead guy right usually with civilization you know they always try to have someone new like they had like brian reynolds had um, had had been a part of Civ three before doing uh, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri along with Sid wow. Soren Johnson for Civ four John Schaefer yeah, I know for I know Soren Sid, uh, yeah I'm playing Pax Premier with Soren guess why no. like I think it's because he's gonna have Cole on the on the Designers Notes podcast oh right. wow that'll be so, that's a nice get I Very think cool. I think I'm not 100 yeah. sure but he was like hey you want to play Pax I'm like do I want to play Pax yeah of course I do right um. Yeah, but yeah, Ed Beach is the guy for Civ Six. I think they've announced Civ Seven. Uh, there was a little bit of rumbling going on with that. I don't know who's at the helm for that. I know that Jake Solomon, that did XCOM and Midnight Suns, actually left for Axis. So there's a there's actually a little bit of a um, little bit. I don't know about turmoil if that's the right to, right way to explain it. I have no it, idea. There, there are things happening at for Axis and Take Two right now. We'll have to see what happens with Civ Seven when it comes out. But yeah, there are crossovers that are happening in that space. I, I think it's cool to see. What should I be doing with with Domash here? With my two commands on Domash? Like, I'm really at a loss. Gotta go. Take care, Brian. Uh, I am going to make my turn here before I, before we end this stream today. Might as well. Um, yeah, might as well actually end the stream on Nevsky as opposed to just, like, rambling on. At well, the I actually hour. think <laughs> it's, a, it's okay, right? I think it's okay. Oh, here's our PAX Premier game. 
Yeah, I have a lot. I have like four games, two packs, and two Nevsky running in parallel. <laughs> nice. Oh man. Very nice. Now I'm just gonna go back to our final uh, our final game state because I am gonna have to get a screenshot of this in some way, shape, or form for the yeah for the title card of the video. Um, yep. I think at some point up higher, Broquain asked if we're gonna have any board game designers on the show anytime soon. Um, I don't know. Probably. The answer is probably, but like I can't really think about that right now because right now I'm in make sure that everything goes well at uh, my job at USC mode um, and play games on the side and study them so I can get more into them because who knows, maybe I'll design a coin game at some point. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> foreshadowing um with the theme that with a theme that is has not been done before in that context so might not be a coin a pure coin game but something along those lines i mean i think to the eggplant show's credit like you guys have done interviews with a lot of what like get different game types that wouldn't necessarily just slot into this is a traditional digital game right like you you've right. done like the the escape room You've done. I mean, the the upcoming. Uh, actually, let me check and see if it's actually out now. There's a new episode that was forthcoming with the. Um, it's not live yet, but the interview with the uh, the arcade cabinet, right. like the the short traveling arcade cabinet. Video so. ga video gamo. Video, video gamo. Yeah. So I mean, like the show has always been willing to explore, you know, different well, spaces outside of just traditional that's, digital stuff. You know, so. kudos to our. Uh, new newer co-hosts right like that's one of the reasons why we did that um yeah because we wanted to be able to cool. to spread the spread the responsibility and theming and who takes the helm on which show and stuff like that like i haven't been on the recording in a while i feel like but also we used to be very much in lockstep like record publish record publish record publish and now we right. do a lot of like record uh then and then record and record and then publish in a different order and so yeah. I, n I'm so not on top of our schedule right now and we could really use a right. production assistant, but we don't really have, like, we put the call out on discord at some point to see if anyone wanted to like, actually like give us, yeah. get, like make the Patreon, not just to uh, keep the lights on, which is what it is right now. And that didn't yeah. really, that wasn't fruitful. So, um, we can't, we'd have to it, like, it, we'd have to fund it all ourselves. And that's also not viable right now for me at least. Yeah. Um, I, if I had more bandwidth, I would have put my name in. No, it's a, and it's not. This is not a. This is not me guilt tripping anyone into this, right? There's well, no, like, no, no. Like, I, yeah, I'm there's just... just like there's only so much we can do on the on yeah. the budget that we have right now, and of course, sure. some people are more willing to be like, oh, I'll just pay it out of pocket. I'm like, yeah, some of us can do that, and some of us can't, right? So it's like not yeah. fair to them if they're like, no, don't worry, I'll do it. And I'm like, n n no, I don't really feel. We need to be all on board with this, right? Um, because I, I've seen things go out of whack when that starts, right? Because then at some point someone's going to be like, well, I'm more invested than you are. I'm like, oh, fine, yeah. right? But also we're nowhere close to that, right? Because right. we're being very careful about, this is a thing that Zach will always talk about in the context of his own work, right? Glacially slow growth, right? Yep. So the kind of where you can like- one, one might say healthy growth. Yeah. One might say healthy growth, right? So it's just like, I want to be able to keep up with this. This should never be something that stresses us out. If it for some reason starts becoming commercially viable, then we'll have to worry about when, when and if that happens. And of course, some people are like, no, it will only happen if we want it to happen. And I'm like, well, okay, then we have to be... So anyway, there's a whole conversation around that, right? Um, so anyway, that's Nevsky. <laughs> um, welcome to Nevsky. Welcome to Nevsky. Uh, Anyone who wants to play it, let me know. Although at this point, I do have a, a, a quite a few games going. Um, all that yeah, said, your rally the trips page was pretty well stocked. Well, so. the thing is, Brian and I are for sure going to start a sixteen game, a sixteen round game after we're done with our with our teaching game for sure, right? Like an async mm -hmm. sixteen round game. I have one going yep. with my friend Jesse, who is the person who beat me five and a half to four and a half, right. um, on his first try with like when we rushed through that game so fast, like we went through the full campaign levy campaign in like two hours and 15 minutes um because we didn't go through we like you and i were pondering every decision for the sake of also like under better understanding what's sure. happening um which of course made these is going to make these videos much longer than they quote unquote need to be but i think Sorry, anyone everybody who, you know anyone who watches this probably also watches it because they maybe want to 
hear what we have to say about it. I don't know. I'd like to believe that. I think the pondering um, is useful from a video perspective to because it's talking about the different dynamics that surround the choices that are in right. front of us, right? Yeah. I think that's that's important. But for me, it's important to learn the game, to, to talk that stuff through. So Right. And now, so at this point, I'd probably like, if I was playing at async, I every now and then I'd fire off a little message, right? Be like, yep. here, take this, take this crossbow, right? But I'd be it'd be much more sparse than what we're, we're, we're padding it out with like a ton of like, Hmm. Right. Like what does this piece do? Right. Kind yeah. of right. Which incidentally is the name of a different show. <laughs> not, <laughs> a, not ours. <laughs> what does this piece do? That's a whole other YouTube channel. Um, so uh, I, I like this a lot. I like this yeah. so much that even after my first few plays, this is, in, this is an immediate. So I only give integer scores on board game geek, but I do like scoring things. Um, this is immediate. This is an immediate nine for me, right? Yeah. With the potential to go to a ten if I play it more and like start liking the series. Um, I mean, it's and it's an eight point one on Board Game Geek now. It's it's f the fifty ninth top war game period. Which I mean, that's a pretty good place to be. Good place there's to a be. lot of competition. A lot of competition in that space. Right. Yeah, and so. it's a it's a because it's a solid system. It's well researched. And that's the work that they put into all of these games, right? With the, the I think the background books are only getting bigger uh, as the series grows, right? They're just like, well, let's make it an actual history book, right? With a ton of references. So yeah. I like it a lot, a lot, lot. Like I, here, here's here's what I would say. I played, a, I finally played a full game of uh, Cuba Libre this past Tuesday at work, the physical board game. Um, which is the second in the coin series and is is always touted as like the intro game. It's like if you've never played coin, that's the one you play first. That's the one to get in on, yeah. Um, and I played the tutorial myself in preparation and then I played it with a friend for like half of the game and then we finally got to play a full game. And I, you know, I there was a way for them to stop me, but they didn't do it. And then when they realized how to do it, we did, they didn't want, I didn't want to roll the game back, but I, so I ended up winning on the second uh, propaganda card. So similar to PAX Premier, like there's cards in the deck that are stacked. And when they come out, those are scoring. Those are when you check for victory conditions. Right. Right. So I won on the second of four propaganda cards. So the game ended like after half of the deck. Mm. Uh, and, I, and I won as Castro. I was the July 20, the, the July 26 movement and I won as Castro, which kind of felt pretty on point. Um, <laughs> And uh, that's a great game. It's a great game. I think it's also for me like an instant nine because the system is just so solid. Right. But if I was giving apps like relative scores, I think I like this more than coin. Um, I mean, it'd be interesting to see as you play more coin games, like how much of that you think kind of ties back to the system and how much it ties back to how the theming is rendered right. within the system. Well, I haven't, a I haven't played fire in the lake yet right so obviously all of this yeah. all of this playing of the coin system and playing uh, kuba libra is ramping up to eventually playing fire in the lake which yeah. i hear is the high water mark i was gonna um, say that's the one that i hear all the time being referred to so right so we'll play yeah there's when i play that i'll i'll revisit my current preference for levian campaign yeah um, I think the one that I'm looking at there too, other than Fire in the Lake, which I haven't played, but I'm I'm sort of interested at, is the Pure Land, just because I like the sort of medieval like Japanese. Oh yeah, I P five hundred pre-ordered that. P five hundred, yeah. Oh, one hundred percent have that in my pre-order. Whenever that comes out, I'll have the Pure Land, right? Because it's thematically, I also find very interesting. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why I like this so much not is not just the system, but I did spend. It's years ago at this point, like four or five years ago when I still lived in New York. I played one game of War of the Ring and one game of Star Wars Rebellion, which are nice. both big, asymmetric two-player games. Two-player, basically yeah. war games, but very thematic, right? Obviously, that one's Star Wars and one's Lord of the Rings. And those games are both amazing, like... Again, insta nines, right? With I would give them yeah. a ten if I got to got them to the table more often. Um, well, I mean, War of the Ring, I think, is the top war game on Board Game Geek. Like, I think it is just, number it's, one. It's very good. It's very very yeah. good. And the thing is, they're long, but it's like it's really it's a fun thing. It's like it's an afternoon or like a full like you meet at noon and you disband at eight p.m. Right? But it's uh, the game's so good. Both of those games are so good. Right? They're just both 
really strong and yep. they're, and they're just hard to play because you need to have someone who's around for a day right yep um but maybe i you know i'm gonna I'm, i'll find i i have definitely have people like that at work it's just that we're always so so stupidly busy that it's always hard to get people to commit to like let's book off all of tuesday afternoon right and it's like that's our job right like we we literally are the interactive media and games division right right and i'm the chair of that thing and it's the it's the currently still i think number one ranked program so it's my job to know this right i can pick my i have to pick my battles because it's not like i can play every game ever made um right but like going deep on something like this for me is extremely rewarding in so many different ways right right and so so thanks a lot <laughs> but i also feel like you 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 knew what you were getting into and now i just have to like wonder whether you're ever going to play this with me again like whether... i'll play it again no i, I mean I'm, I'm down for playing it again like i uh, <laughs> i i don't know that i've played a rally of the troops game that i've actually won i i think i'm i'm good to to always be the <laughs> the sort of also ran in a lot of these but i i just i like i like the game designs i like the different spaces i'm absolutely down for um you know i if i feel brave enough at some point you know if you want to do another 16 rounder even outside of what you're doing with brian and yeah, uh, no, we, I'm, can, I'm happy. Uh, we can definitely start one because again, it's like uh, it's like you can take the good good thing about Rally the Troops is that there's no timer. I mean, there I, is no I timer. understand why BGA has one and why that ties into your reputation, and they want to keep people yeah. like actually playing the games against each other, and not just yeah. like bailing halfway through a game. Um, yeah. But yeah, but I would also not play a game on Rally the Troops with a random person, right? Like right. I would not. I mean, the the community in this area is mostly. Gen is is nice and like i've been doing a lot of trades lately on bgg and honestly like almost everyone i've ever interacted with on that platform is a kind person right um, and so i've been having good interactions um and you know it always takes like one bad interaction to like sour the well but like um at this point it's been mostly good that said i'd pr always prefer to play with a person i at least know Right? right or i've talked to before even if i've never met them in person like i've ne who knows if i'm ever i don't know if i'm ever going to meet I probably hopefully i'll meet you in person one of these days but like that That's hasn't happened good. yet so yeah. but it's fine right um yeah well i think if nothing else like just the people that we interact even with like on the discord right like eggplant.show for oh, people yeah. uh, for anybody that's listening to this later that you want to get to a great like discord community like we do have a very dedicated like a, a really great like tabletop <laughs> channel that's going there right. you know so real queen it's like i'm looking forward to eggplant con um, <laughs> see for for something like that i know I, I know what you're saying um i'd love to do something like that but for that we'd need to have like when this stuff happens i usually find that it happens because someone went someone with a very strong business acumen went yeah. to creative people to pitch them on here's what i can do for you and they actually liked each other yeah right but that happens that's so rare right that's so rare that it's not just a cash grab or something right and usually you'll be like eh. right you need the person needs to come in with like wanting to be friends with you right right I think the well, only think example even... I can think of is, and I'm not that they're, you know, they've done their fair share of garbage over the years too, right? Is the Penny Arcade Expo stuff. Right, right? for packs. Because they had, um, I forget the name of the guy, but they had a, a person literally came to them and was like, "You here's how I can build your brand, right? And then right. it turns out that was a friend of theirs and they actually like play games together. And then that person started the packs. 10 or the PAX thing in, in, in Seattle and then it became PAX East and all these other things. And then of course you have the other stuff like um, uh, Dice Tower, right? Dice Tower yeah. has like four or five conventions at this point, right? Um, which seems wild. Um, and, and Shut Up and Sit Down has like all the places yeah. that are much larger than we are, right? They have conventions. Uh, and I don't necessarily know how that would work for us. Because I think even none of us are of doing the, this full time. Like none of us are doing out, this full time. Right. I, even outside of that, I mean, certainly at some point, you know, I think as as more like in person gatherings or are you know post pandemic Robert are Coo. coming into play, like Robert Koo is the PHF. Yeah. 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 But, like there's more. 
there's more in-person gatherings. I mean, there are other things where we could do like eggplant meetups, like if the community was interested in yeah. it, like like San, San Diego Historical Games Convention. Um, which gate, I, like, which I just signed up for. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, online Games only, but like, it's, yeah. yeah. Like there's, 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 well, I thought, no, actually I thought San Diego, I thought they were doing an in-person presence this year. Um, maybe not, but um not this yeah, not the like, spring one they might be doing one in the fall but the one in now the fall in, in march thinking, i think yeah. it's like the 19th or the 20th of march 18th of oh, march okay. 17th of march i signed up for it. it's five dollars right and the games of course are going to be played on basil i'm already like ooh. um <laughs> but they are doing a lot of talks and i think you can just like go yeah. into a virtual room and volko might talk about the future of the libyan campaign i don't know right mm -hmm. but i was like oh i five dollars sign me up right yeah um it's not that easy to find. It's weirdly hard to find the SD Histcon stuff, right? Like if you just type in SD Histcon, you get to their Twitter page that doesn't have. I, was just I saying, think that has a link into their page, but you don't get to the page directly. And I'm like, oh man. <laughs> you kind of have to. You kind of have to go around a little bit. Yeah, I, I usually start from the Twitter and then go to the main page. The main page has like. So there's spring deployment. Looking at it now, that's and then the, the conflicts of interest stuff. That yeah, that's the spring that's one. That's the spring deployment. And I am thinking of I am thinking of the fall one. I think that they were looking yeah. at doing. So I signed end. up for the spring deployment one. So if anyone wants to join me for that, be my guest, right? Like I'm going to definitely be around for that. Uh, okay. So I think it's the week before GDC. So it's like that weekend, whatever that weekend is. I think it's the it's probably the 18th or something. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do something like Eggplant Con, right? But it's like not a thing that um, I wouldn't know how to, I wouldn't even know how to start, right? Right. Maybe someday. Yeah, maybe Like if we're, if we're talking slow growth, slow, healthy growth, um, yeah. you know, maybe someday. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm friends with many people who've made this their job, right? Like I met um, Quinns in like 2012, I want to say. He was in New York for uh, for a conference, for the NYU Games Conference, because he was invited to give a talk or something. And I met him, and we immediately had a, had like a, I, for lack of better term, I'll just say a bromance, right? Because it was like, because we were both into the same things, and he was in town for a month, and we just like hung out a lot and played a lot of board games. And so, you know, I was, I'm, I'm from, I know people who've made this, who've done, who do this for a living. Right. And I was always like, well, my 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 sustainability is always going to come from my academic work. So I don't see myself ever making that my 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 job. But never say never. Right. Never. Right. If this was if this for whatever reason. And again, the reason is, I think you have to want it and you have to put the work in. And we can't do that, not because we don't want to, but because these are not none of us for none of us. This is a full time job. Right. right? Because right. if you well, make it I a full-time we... job, you can like do production quality and more stuff and more involvement and like get the word out and everything that all these other places do, right? More, and then you get into territories where it's like, okay, now publishers are going to approach you about making reviews. Uh, publishers right. are going to approach you for um, sponsored content, right? And all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And and then it gets you know into that realm. <laughs> I think there. I think there. I think there are enough. I'll be honest. I usually think when we talk about this internally, I they usually say stuff like, "There are enough people out there doing that right now. They're doing a really good job, right?" I don't think they need another channel. That's usually my take on it, right? Beware the <laughs> moniker of content creator. That Brokerant, you may have noticed that I just said stuff earlier because I'm really trying hard to not use the term content. I hate it so much so much because it's so vapid it's such a vapid term um gee andy you, you're you're not much of an influencer i'm you really know, not like... <laughs> and i never will be right because i'm too ne i'm too negative on that stuff right like i'm too yeah. i'm not i'm not a fan of it's like it, it it it's calling it content to me and again i don't want to go into this whole thing right yeah but like is just devaluing a person's life Right, like yeah. a, like a person's life's, life's work is being devalued to like it's now it's content, right? Yeah. And if you want to find, see the funniest take on this, just watch Inside, right? Watch that, watch the comedy show Inside with uh, what's his name, Bo, not Bo. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Um, not offhand, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, hey, whatever. Look up Bo Burnham. There we go. Thank you, Charles. Um, just watch Inside. 
I'm going to make you some content. Like, it's a, there's a great song in there. <laughs> All that I can think about with content is that tweet back when, uh, around the time that Trump was, uh, the election where Trump was elected in 2016. And there was like, the tweet was like, I feel bad for our country, but this is tremendous content. Um, that sort of me like puts, <sighs> puts like content like where it is, right? It's kind of like, okay, you know, it's, yeah, I, I agree. So as, I don't, as a, yeah, as a yeah, monetizing like, factor, like, no, yeah, no it's like, you. it's like, uh, the last thing I think about someone like Fred's work is like content Fred's making. He uses the term, but I, I get it. That's what they say, right? But him just saying stuff like, we're generating more content is like, I, that's the current vernacular. Fine. Right. But like what they do, I do not see as content. For me, that's like actual, like active work and like valuable contributions to a cut to like a cut to a, um, a discussion and a discourse and a community and a culture. So it's like content. Yep. Nah, sorry. Do it work hard. Yeah. Like, I'm going to sorry. Anyone who used just use that as a, as like a placeholder for that is like, do better. <laughs> sorry, do better. There's other right. language out there. Yeah. There are other things that we can Content use is to capitalism as religion is to kind of... Oof. <laughs> Spicy. How much time do we have left on the stream? Spicy. <laughs> um, I have a meeting in 10 minutes, so I should probably... Yeah, I was, I, I was going to say, I, if, if if you had your, your, your hard stop, I'm wondering... No, and I mean, the good thing is now I can actually, like, if I clip this, if I highlight this part, it's still going to be over two hours because we just did, like, a full hour. Like, we did... In the yep. three and a half and two hour, two videos is going to be two hours total of debrief, right? With like, with like all but Nevsky, right? It's always going right. to be like, it's, it's, if all you're interested Nevsky in is Nevsky, plus. stop the second we stop playing because the right. rest is going to be ramble central, central, yep. right? Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe you come for the Nevsky and then you stay for the ramble, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's the eggplant show progress. Who knows? But I mean, we do love that, right? I mean, that's why we do it currently enjoy having the just us shows every now and then. Yeah. Um, Those shows are great. And so usually I, you know, I'm like, oh, we get to talk about what we current, what we're currently playing and why we think it's great and stuff like that. And I know that, again, I, we are very well aware of the fact that those shows are, are like a dime a dozen. So we never wanted it to be just that. But like I've pushed pretty hard for like, yeah, but it doesn't have to be just the other thing either. Right. Right. We're not doing song exploder. Like that's not our thing. Right. Maybe we are the closest. It's a good change of pace. Yeah. It's a good change of pace for the other shows that you have. And, and I think that's fine. The main thing for us is like, we started this as an excuse to hang out. Um, when is pre, you know, 2018, long before the pandemic started, it was just an excuse to hang out. Uh, Nick had just switched jobs and went indie and was looking for things that he wanted to do for, you know, personal value. And I said to him, we could, we could do something like this. And that's how it started. And then it was always going to be that, right? It was going to be like an excuse for us to hang out and have interesting conversations with people's work and about their work that we, that we'd like to promote and that we like, that we're really into. And so as long as we yeah. can do that, the show is going to continue to exist. And we have, a, I think there's a lot of, now that we have so many people on it, and potentially more in the future, although we have not um, that this is not me sp like making a little tease, right? Like we haven't there's no one lined up, but we would like to still grow probably to eight is my guess. Um, we're six right now. Um, it was always going to be a collective of people who like want to do that kind of stuff. And there's enough energy and fuel in the tank right now to keep going indefinitely, I would say. Like, I don't think maybe at, maybe in the future there will come a point where some of us say, my time is now done here. Um, but that's also not even like that. No one's even close to that yet. Right. So I don't know. Been, I mean, it's Mostly. been a great run. You said 2018, like the first episode, I'm looking at the podcast feed now. First episode was in September. So in a few yeah, months from now, you're we're celebrating five years. We're coming up on five years. Right. And we just, we just, I think a couple of days ago, Nick sent like a little graph around and it was like, we just breached 500,000 downloads, like total, nice. right? Wow. And I was like, cool. That's a nice, that's a really nice milestone. That's a cool number. Right? Yeah. And that's just from downloads through uh, whatever our server is. I forget blank on the name right now. Um, but uh, so it's not counting. It's probably like probably closer, right? 
100,000 didn't seem... Yeah, it's definitely grown a bit, Bro Quinn. It's definitely grown a bit. Any developments yeah. on choice of the next Into the Depths? I think so. I think so. There's still a little bit of a debate as to whether we should be running two in parallel with like a team of three each. Um, but we're not... I don't think that's going to happen because too many of us are stretched too thin. Like Zach and I are really under a lot of duress right now for very different reasons. Um, but I think what's going to happen is that the people who are who have more cycles are going to run the first one, and then which will not be Zach or myself, um, and then we'll jump on occasionally. Um, I think that's what's going to happen. But we still haven't figured out the timing for that because we still have a couple of shows lined up. Like we have a couple of comic shows coming, and uh, for like at least a month or two. So I think Into the Depths isn't going to start until May. Which is good for me because that means that my second semester is going to be coming to an end. Yeah, I was going to say you're going to be near the end of that. So. Yeah, that's that's like kind I, of... I, if I may plug, it's not into the depths, but it is off brand into the depths for the Wednesday stream. Like I have been doing Sharon the Wanderer. Oh yeah, right? yeah. So plug it. Interested in that? Yeah, um, we're doing a Sharon Five live mm -hmm. Let's Play. So we're we're going week by week through the main game. Um, absolutely come check that out if you're interested in roguelikes and or particularly the mystery dungeon series that you're in the wanderer is a part of so i wish i, I think had, there were I wish the, i had the time <laughs> i wish <laughs> i think there's i like i know like sharon at different points have been talked about like for end of the deaths i don't know if it necessarily makes sense but we'll do the live play series and and you can come hang out on that so it's it's, it's wednesday it's, but it's, time it's, trust well. me there's a spreadsheet with all the possible topics and it's still in there right right okay it's still in there so but it's not it's definitely not there's like at least four or five right now that have like bumped it down the the, the priority queue, right? Right. I, I can't see the spreadsheet, but I wouldn't imagine that it's a front. It's not high uh, right now. It was definitely high at a point, but right now there's like just because of the because of the new voices that we have in the mix, there's like a couple of other more left field things that seem, you sure. know, more interesting because they're like really left field. Like Sharon made a lot of sense when we were still the Spelunky show, like. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, now, it's, a, it's a broader show now. You cover yeah. a lot of interesting stuff. But also, like, this is, like, you, you notice that when I put up the YouTube video, I did use the Into the Depths logo, right, for the for the, for this, right, for the Learning Nevsky two-part two series, right? Because I'm just like, this makes sense, right? This is pretty, we're going pretty deep on this, right? This is, I don't think this is just surface-level stuff. Yes, we're only learning it, but this is not, like, a simple lift, right? Yeah. Yep. Um. So that's why more I put that. More left than KR zero. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I put that. That's why I put that there. More left than KR zero. Oh yeah. Way more <laughs> left. Way more left field. Um, this is this is intriguing. It's gonna be it's gonna be an awesome announcement. I mean, I hope I you know it's still it's it's in the works. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna come together. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's gonna come together. Pretty sure it's gonna be the next thing. Pretty sure. Um, but uh, I'm not I'm not deeply involved in it. Uh, I just hope to be a part of it at some point. Um, okay, with that, I think I'm going to hang up the call so that we yep. get can get on with our with our respective days. Thanks a lot, Ozzy. That was super fun. Um, I'll, inv yeah, I'll invite you to a six. I'll in the next thing I'll do after my one after my noon to one meeting is I'll set up a full sixteen rounds of the game. Sounds great. And then Buckle I'll up. tell you I'm going to set it to random unless you have a preference. Okay. Um, I'm fine with random. And then I'll tell you. Unlike Jesse, I would strongly so he, he he I think he's playing the Teutons and I'm the Russians, and he start like starts with two lords and then has to muster them right through the fealty mm. rules, and I think, right or the other way around and he only has and he didn't do that so now he only has right. two lords on the board and I'm like is that some grand strategy that you want them to come out later and he's like nah I just didn't know how to do it I couldn't figure out the <laughs> UI and it's not obvious right because it's not a button. You have to click right. on a lord, and then you have to click on one of the discs of a lord in the calendar to signal, "I want to muster this person." Want to muster them? Yeah. Yep. So we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah. Like definitely will be a contrast to the quick start that automatically seeds most of that up front. Um, so that that'll be. Cool. You'll but notice. Yeah, you'll cool. notice the second you have to do that before anything else, you'll understand why that was a smart move on their end to have quick start scenarios. Because you're like, yeah, so now first you have to like equip them and then get them on the board and then stack the command deck, right? And you're like, that's a, yeah. I don't, if you don't know that's why, lot. that's a lot to do before you've ever had a campaign. Yep. Right. 
So you know, it's very smart, very smart introductory scenario. Yeah. So yeah, we can go ahead and do that, um, and then yeah, um, I'll, I'll we'll we'll catch catch you next week. Catch people on Wednesday for the sharing stream. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks a lot, man. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Later. Okay. Sweet. Well, it surprise to my to my great surprise. I can't really fully understand why this is happening, but to my great surprise, there are actually like twenty five people in here. Um, so I hope that was entertaining to, to some extent. Um, probably I'm st like I'm gonna you know in the short term I'm probably gonna go back to like playing more video games on Friday. Um, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. It kind of also a little bit depends on this experiment of like, I haven't in years, I haven't uh, highlighted uh, Twitch clips. I just let them expire. And I ha now I'm like putting them all on YouTube. And I think the first part of our learning in FC got like 60 or 70 views, which is more than any of the other archived videos ever got. So I was like, okay, if there's an interest here, then uh, it's all technically video games. This is true. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to, maybe we'll do more board game content, right? Cause I, I just content, see, there I go using the freaking word. Um, we'll do like more <laughs> board game streams and board game videos and stuff, because I actually enjoy learning. I, I, I mean, it's shocking that a professor would enjoy learning, right? Um, I really like learning new stuff, even though I haven't fully explored the other stuff. It's just what I do. Right? Like it's more rewarding for me to learn a new thing than to perfect a, no a thing I know. Jack of all trades. <clears throat> that's just that's just me in a nutshell. Um, okay, so with that said, it is twelve o'clock. I have to go to my other meeting. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, explore the edges. There's always more. It's just it's too much. I <laughs> what did I call it last week? I said there's like I'm I'm surrounded by rabbit holes, right? It's not like there's like one and I'm like, well, there's, I'm not going to go down there. Like there's like, um, there's like dozens, there's dozens around me. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm sitting in one, right? I have like all this music gear around and I'm not using it right now because I'm going down this other rabbit hole. So it's like, yeah, it's a very fortunate situation to be in that I'm like enthusiastic about so many things that I do not understand at all how anyone could ever be bored. I just don't, but I understand that people are and I feel for them. So that's just me being understanding that I'm lucky that way. Um, with all that said, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll be back next Friday. Uh, probably won't do them like let this last week. We did this on a Monday evening. Don't think that's going to happen, but uh, what is going to happen? I actually can't say this here for whoever is still around tomorrow, Saturday at 8 p.m. Pacific. I'm going to start up a stream where Doug Wilson, my lovely co-host, and our friend of the show, Rob Dubbin, are going to puppet master me through Slice and Dice. Um, and that's going to be probably another stream that I will uh, um, clip and archive to YouTube because I think that's going to be very fun. Like The two of them are deep into that game. I'm not, but I really like it. So they're gonna, they, they told me there's a way to unlock all the modes and relock them again. So they're gonna unlock all the modes for me and we're gonna play something that I would probably like just croak at and they're gonna like puppet master me through it. And I'm super excited about that. So we're gonna do that tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. So that's Saturday, 8 p.m. Pacific. Um, and of course, whatever, you either you're on the stream and you're gonna like help me not die um, <laughs> or you watch it, you can watch it later because we will archive that. Um, and so with that out of the way, I'm going to say, tune in for that. I'll be back next Friday. I don't know when the next podcast is going up because I'm not in the loop for that. Um, and for anyone watching this for the, for the Nevsky learn and teach, and you're still here, God bless you for still watching this. Um, and go to eggplant.show. That's where all our podcast stuff lives. That's where all our, where you can see who the co-hosts are, um, and that's where all the links to all the other YouTube sound, whatever, like everywhere where we exist on the iTunes and whatnot, uh, which is of course called, it's not iTunes, it's called Apple Podcasts, right? Um, so with that, I'll say, as always, see you next Friday latest or tomorrow evening. And until then, uh, stay safe, happy, healthy, and sane. Cheers. <laughs>